Good morning, everybody. This Hangout on Air is live. I am Rosie Murphy, a.k.a. Rosie O'Kelly, and welcome to each and every one of you. I'm sorry for part one of the Hangout, which I have uh, deleted because of the pulsing. I had the uh, video camera set on uh, photo mode, so it's very sensitive to if something is moving in relation to the camera. Thank you, Kevin. If something's moving in relation to the camera, then it tries to adjust the focus constantly. So I've now put it on video mode, and I've locked down the focus. We will have no more pulsing. That would have driven me absolutely insane. So if you're just coming on the Hangout, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you enjoy it uh, today, uh, we grow, yeah, man, we grow a lot of fruits and vegetables here. This is a working rancho uh, in Santa Rosa, California. It's small. It's a rancho. I guess you'd almost call it a ranchette. It's smaller in size than a ranch, obviously. But we do sit on a lot of land relative to cities, relative to major cities. And this is a city of about 200,000 people, Santa Rosa, California. So we have a little patch of green, our little carve out in a heavily, heavily populated urban area here with tons of apartments, very expensive housing. So we're very blessed to have this uh, piece of uh, land. And we're, over time, we're trying to make it more and more productive by growing, currently we grow apples, we grow figs, we also we harvested apples to make a uh, apple pie. So we grow figs, apples, two varieties of plums, two varieties of cherries, peaches, um, about uh, six or seven varieties of citrus, juice oranges, eating oranges, um, novelty type of oranges. We grow uh, persimmons, tomatoes, uh, pears. So there's a lot of production that occurs uh, around here. Thank you, Mark. Welcome back to you. So I appreciate it. Once again, apologies. You only missed in the first part I terminated. All I did was uh, clean up the tomatoes, wash them up real good so that uh, we don't have any, uh, any dirt or anything. They're very important. The next part of the process I'm now just collecting these uh, tomatoes. I'm cutting them in half and actually just squeezing the uh, removing the seeds not going crazy but if you give it a good squeeze you can see that you remove most of the seeds and a lot of the moisture which is exactly what I want to do okay so it's a simple process it does take a little bit of time to do but it's definitely worth it make sure your hands are clean here okay situate that net and then once again I'm cutting hemispherically across the uh, wide part so that the seeds are exposed and then I'm just giving that a good squeeze and uh, you can see that that does a great job of removing most of the uh, seeds the skin I don't care the skin will be pulverized I do try to uh, remove the uh, skins though so that's a good thing so How's everybody's Sunday going today? Good, I hope. You got Yeah Man out there. I don't know if you're working today, uh, Yale Man, later on. I know you work some evening hours. Remember, don't cut these top. Cut these, cut these uh, laterally here on the sides. And uh, just go ahead and squeeze out those seeds. Does a good job. Right there. Okay, you can actually just, if you don't want to core the top of it, you can just cut it off like that. Eva, how you doing, my friend? Good morning to you. We're just uh, processing some, making some uh, Italian. So very hot here today. It's going to be a hot one here, too. But I really do enjoy hot weather. I don't really mind it at all. I don't like cold weather at all. I define cold as being below 50 degrees. So once again, just take them, squeeze it out, and lo and behold, you get a really nice product that you can just throw right into the pot. And we're going to process that. 
I mean, nice. This is going to be a long hangout. Just people will come and go all day just checking in, doing, doing their thing. Hope you all enjoy the uh, Reno videos. I put up the uh, Virginia City Boot Hill Cemetery set to the good, the bad, and the ugly music. I think you may enjoy that, the final shootout scene. Uh, it's a lot of tomatoes. Yeah, Car Harvey, yeah, camera could not cope looking. There must have been a little demon inside of it. Yeah, well, I do certainly have a front end on me, that's for sure, Harvey. <laughs> And with luck, by uh, by uh, middle of January, my back end will be done too. Kevin said it's the humidity that's the bad here. Yeah, we don't. We're you know we're blessed here, Kevin, because we don't have we don't have the humidity here. It's very dry, so it's always even if it's a hundred degrees, it's not too bad. But remember, I grew up in Baltimore, so I know what humidity is on Chesapeake Bay. <sighs> yeah, well, I don't know, uh, Rick, what that's about. Yeah, we have a pretty large garden. We're mainly in fruit production. Next year, we're going to be moving into uh, really ramping up our production of vegetables. So I'm looking forward to uh, doing that. We're going to get a tiller. I don't know. I'll put this down here. As you can see, I'm just slicing these across like that and then just squeezing it out. You'd be surprised how many seeds you can just rapidly get rid of. I used to save all the juice and make a tomato soup on the day that I did this, and that was really tasty, saving that juice. See how well that works? Gets all that out. Look at this, uh, look at this big whopper tomato here. Got a very deep pour in it. Try to cut that out. I got a very sharp knife, the Henkel's knife here. Take off a little of this bottom. Some of them I'll leave in it. Like this one is a really weird shape. Tomato, it doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, seeds in it. I'm just kind of cleaning it up some Removing the core you don't want to hit a hard spot when you're having When you're having your sauce uh, Diva says it's not as hot here today mid 80s. I went hiking yesterday and thought I was gonna die. Oh good lord uh, Let's see Diva you were out in around Rio Vista is that correct? A Delta country out there in uh, where Locke and those places are? If I recall what Cooper told me last night, that you're out there in the Central Valley, Stockton, further out. Okay. Now for your board off a little bit. So you can see we're we're getting a lot of uh, got a lot of tomatoes already processed. We're about halfway. It doesn't take too long. Just don't cut yourself and make sure your hands are clean. I go into a restaurant. I judge first how clean the place is. All right. Oh, Brentwood. Okay, it's a nice area, Brentwood. I want to uh, get over to uh, Rio Vista. And hang out there. That's where we bought the first RV I ever owned. Was out. Was out that way. All right. So moving right along. All right. You know, actually, our our summer's been kind of on the cool side here. Tell you guys the truth. I mean, the rest of the country keep talking about global warming and stuff, and it seems like the warmer other places get, the cooler. We've only had to use our air conditioner one time this summer. 
because at nighttime it just chills down and it gets so cool. Okay. And if anybody wants a link, I'll go ahead and set the speakers up and, and come on and uh, chat if you want. I'm sure Allie will pop by later. Okay. I'm about two thirds of the way done. See, I've got the good collection of tomatoes here. Yeah, for you guys, it's not as fun as uh, audio workshop hangouts, huh? I can't do that stuff in the summertime because the shop just is too uncomfortably hot. Uh, that's awesome. It's high 90s higher from May to November out here. Yeah. Yeah, see here on the coast at the nighttime, the heat from the Central Valley rises. And as that heat rises, it pulls the cold air off of the ocean. The cool air comes inland. It's like nature's air conditioner. So it's like 90 degrees at 4 o'clock, but then by 7 o'clock, it's 68 degrees. And then by 6 o'clock in the morning, it's 53 degrees. So, you know, it's like it's like a perfect climate. I really love I really love the climate here. I don't like the rainy season. I just don't like I don't like bad. I, I'm, a, I'm strictly a sunny gal. Uh you know, just psychologically affected by it. You know, the fires were terrible last year when I woke up and I saw that uh, orange glow in the side and there were trees down on the road and stuff, and I knew something real bad was underway. That orange, that sickening. Let me see if I can find that picture. I'll show it. Let me see if I can find that. I got Instagram. If you if you hit the link on my uh, channel page, I have Instagram. Yeah, I don't like I don't like the winter. Let's see. Let's Let see if I can find this. That glow in the sky. I don't know how well you can see that, but look at that uh, sky. That's all smoke just pouring up from the the northern part of the city is just burning down. 6,000 homes in six hours. And look at that pink in the sky. It's just the hills just blazing. It was uh, amazing. Just terrible. That's just all billowing. All billowing smoke there. It's awful. You couldn't breathe for days. This was uh, this was looking downtown. It was just a fireball. It was the uh, deadliest and costliest wildfire in U.S. history. I mean, you could you look down, you look to the. Uh, it was just a fireball. Everything was on fire on both sides of Highway 101. It's terrible. And I'll tell you, at at uh, at the peak of the firefighting efforts, think about this. One out of every two pieces of fire equipment in the state of California was here. One out of every two in the whole state of California, a state of 40 million people, one out of two pieces of fire apparatus were here. There were firefighters from Samoa, Fiji, Australia, Canada. They came from everywhere because the biggest fear was that it would sweep into the center of town and just basically level and destroy the uh, the whole town. So they were desperate. We had airdrops and everything. It's awful. 
just a very, very frightening time. We had to pack up here several times and prepare to evacuate. And what do you take with you? I got all kinds of vintage audio equipment and, you know, priceless stuff here. But, you know, if you ever see, if you want to see a really cool video, look at the video of the uh, Berkeley Fire Department when they arrive on the scene about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning from Berkeley, about uh, 50 miles away. And the guys couldn't believe both sides of the highway were on fire as far as the eye could see. And they're like, we don't even, there's nothing to even save. What, what are we supposed to do? Literally everything is on fire. There's nothing, where do we even begin? This? There's nothing to put out of fire. You know, it's all a blaze. That's the danger of an area where we don't get any rain all summer long. So, yeah, scary. Uh, the actually, Mark, we had a we had a hurricane force winds came in, beginning at about uh, 9 p.m. on Sunday night. We had hurricane force winds came off of the desert and brought superheated dry air and 70 mile an hour winds. Those 70 mile an hour winds took down a Pacific Gas and Electric Company power line, hit the ground. I think a tree limb came down, took down the power line. The power line hit the ground and ignited the fire over in uh, Napa County to the east. And that fire raced over top of the hill uh, out of Napa County and into Sonoma County, destroying everything in its path. A similar thing had happened in 1964. Same path, same beginning point. So. The whole rich, rich community in the hills got wiped out. All the rich homes in the city were destroyed. People had to jump in their swimming pool to save their lives and stuff. So, 43 people died. And uh, I think over a billion and a half dollars worth of uh, loss. A lot of people will never rebuild because they're so traumatized by living in the hills. You never think it's going to happen. But like I say, it doesn't rain here from mid-April till November. And things get super dry. I mean, it doesn't rain one single day. It is sunny every single day. So you can imagine how dry things get. Okay. Okay. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. Susie, how are you doing, sweetie? You can see we're just about done prepping our uh, tomatoes. This is actually the, the most labor intensive part of it. Just coring and carefully removing what seeds we can. Not going crazy here, but just squeezing out some seeds. We make this in Adam. How many tomatoes did you get? I wish some planted some. You know, Allison, um, we get these in waves. This is just the first wave of what's going to be made into sauce. Every two weeks for the next month, I'll be putting up more and more sauces as the harvest comes in. We probably get 100 to 120 pounds of tomatoes just in our outside boxes here. We try to get the bigger varieties, but for some reason, it seems like the nurseries always mislabel. And we end up with some smaller ones. So I think we're gonna grow from seed next year. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw, uh, do, from, do from seed. That way we'll get the varieties. A lot of these places, they don't really care, you know? <sighs> All right. Yeah, how is Susie today? How is Susie? Okay. All right. We're in the home stretch. We've got a whole, look at this so far. We've got a whole shebang of beautiful tomatoes 
Yeah, Lynn was saying to uh, blitz eggshell and water and add to your tomato soil and it'll double your crop. That's very interesting. I guess it's the calcium. I don't know how else to explain it. If you guys haven't seen the uh, cemetery video of Virginia City, I set it, I set it to uh, the music of the final shootout scene of the good and the bad and the ugly. I think that you'll really enjoy that. It's only about three minutes long. It's a nice, uh, it's the last cinematic. Well, it's not the last. We have one more night video of Reno. And that'll complete that trip. And then I'll put all of that into a playlist. We had that really nice, uh, we had that really nice hotel suite, didn't we? <laughs> a lot of people were looking at the price. Oh, you didn't pay that much for it. Well, you don't pay that much midweek. But it was still a beautiful room. Now Jen is uh, Jen is spoiled. <laughs> yeah, I love tomatoes too, Susie. It's my favorite fruit. And yes, tomatoes are considered a fruit. They're nice and juicy. What I do is just squeeze out the seeds. You can see how beautifully that works. You don't get them all, but you get enough. All right. And the hard part of this whole process is done. Now we get the food processor, and it's kind of fun now. We just kind of process these away. And then we're gonna then we're gonna do the magic. We're gonna make the Italian sauce with the with the touch. My mom used to throw the water from boiled eggs and plants. Okay, that's interesting. It's got to be the calcium. We we were told to use Epsom salts. We worked that in, but I think our our planter boxes are kind of depleted, so we're gonna. We're gonna to move to the back, uh, the back uh, land for growing next year. Okay, our last tomato. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup and then move on to part two. So, all right. That yielded a nice bunch of tomatoes. You can see that. Jen's worn out. Well. Actually, Jen's got a lot more strength, and to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, Jen is kind of, Jen is kind of iffy. Yeah, Harvey, check out the uh, cemetery uh, video. Jen's kind of iffy on travel. She's kind of a homegirl, but she really, she really enjoyed. I mean, she really enjoyed Reno this year. Oh, you mom used them in coffee too, keep the bitter taste down. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, people have all kinds of uh, secret ways that they uh, kind of pump up their crop. I'm gonna kind of clean up the uh, clean up the sink down here a little bit. You can see it's a right royal mess right now. So glad we changed that our kitchen coffee. I like to have a neat kitchen. All right. We're just going to grind up these over here. my hands and we're going to get on to part two. Jen likes a neat kitchen. She doesn't want to come in here to bomb down mess. Okay. 
Uh, you'll see I've washed my hands many times through the day. Let's wash out this big pot now. This is our moonshine pot. We will be making a uh, load of moonshine sometime this summer or fall. All right. We got our two pots. Yeah, Reno is very different from, it is very different from Las Vegas. It's a more, you know, I don't know, it's a much older, it's a much more older city. It was the divorce capital of America. We used to be able to go down there to get an accelerated divorce. It was nine months. Then Reno came in with a six month. And then they reduced that to six weeks waiting time till final till final dissolution. So Reno was really built on uh, well, you could call it unhappiness, or you could call it uh, you could call it happiness. <laughs> Getting divorced sometimes it's the it's the best day in people's lives too, right? Yeah, tomatoes are excellent, excellent uh, fruit. Next thing we got, Jen was kind enough to uh, clean up the uh, food processor here. And we're going to begin to process these tomatoes. Plug that in with that shock in myself here. There we go. Okay, we got this nice uh, Black & Decker. Yeah, they, they took that down to six weeks, believe it or not. And we're just going to load in these tomatoes. And this is why you no longer have to worry about removing the skin and all. This just pulverizes it. Okay. Thank you, Ellie. This was a, uh, my friend Ellie, this was her tip. But don't, those, don't those colors look beautiful in those tomatoes? Beautifully right. Let's see. Now we don't want to take every bit of uh, we we don't want to take every bit of roughness out of this, so we kind of want that kind of grind on that. Okay. We're going to pour that in to there. We're going to retransfer this back to the regular pot. But for now, we're going to leave this in here. Oh, yeah. I, you know, Susie, our whole deal here is, and I always tell Jen, like birthdays and Christmas and all that, get me things that I use all the time. If you want to get me a gift, Give me something that I use will use all the time because we don't have a shitload of space here, and I like to have simple, simple but effective appliances here. So a food processor is wonderful, really wonderful. So I think Jen is kind of a believer in that philosophy too now. Make tomato juice. Okay. Okay. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun when you make homemade. It's certainly not cost effective, but it's fun because you have all natural ingredients. We don't spray our tomatoes. We never have to worry what's in the pesticides and all that crap. <laughs> See, uh, there's the British princess there, ain't hey, Nicole? 
God forbid she not get the wrench and power to wield. There we go. How you doing, babe? Good evening to you in the great UK. And as I always tell everybody, Canada, US, Australia, New Zealand, we're all just simple branch offices at the UK, right? That's all we are. <laughs> God save the Queen. <laughs> I'm doing good, Nicole. Nice to see you. Oh, boy. All right. So about uh, two more loads, and we should good to be good to go here. Uh, so what is, uh, what is Nicole up to these days? Nice to see you. I haven't seen you around the drama sphere. No. How's the uh, how's the banking life? I'm gonna call I'm gonna call Nicole a banker. <laughs> she's on the, she's writing loans on flats. Like <laughs> F you, Rosie. I always knew you'd make a great banker, Nicole. <sighs> did you see that? Uh, did you see that video Shay put up of that uh, person dancing? That was pretty, uh, pretty cool. All right, the last load is going in. There we go. <laughs> you wanker. <laughs> oh, shit. Everybody's favorite grit. All right. We're going to be dropping loads, baby. There we go. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm gonna get this. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the dishwasher later. Get all that goodness out. I'm gonna leave that in the sink. Yeah, the puppy is uh, Milo. Milo ain't no puppy anymore. Now we take all of that goodness and right back into our main pot. And that's just the perfect amount. Right there. That is just the perfect amount. That's nice. Having drag races now down the street of Shattered Dreams, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, the shit storm is here. Huh? Actually, Nicole, I've had a, I've had a very, uh, you know, I've had a very, what would you say, very relaxing. I've had a really a wonderful, particularly August is off. I'm not going to jinx it, but August is really off to a very, uh, very good start. <laughs> Don't want to jinx it, but look at all that. Uh, we have our uh, tomatoes rough now. Okay. So to this, we're going to add two cans of tomato paste. And make sure to wash your hands. Yeah, you must be relaxed and wearing clothing. <laughs> Actually, it's the other way around, right? <laughs> the less, the better, you know? <laughs> Different strokes for different folks. Okay. No, I don't think there's really been any. Uh, don't think there's been much drama. Just, uh, I haven't seen that much lately. You're also going to need a double can, a, um, a 
how many ounces? This is a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and add them in. The uh, tomato paste gives an intensified tomato flavor. If you didn't have it, it would be very hard to spike to get some, what would you say, some bite into your uh, to into your sauce, okay? So you really need to have that. Let me go ahead and find a can opener somewhere down here. Uh, all right. We still have the old uh, manual. So what's Nicole? Uh, how's your summer, Nicole? Go ahead and add that whole can of tomato sauce in. And then we're going to open up our two cans. And then I'm going to put some onions on the side. And I'm going to prep some onions and garlic. And then I'm going to blend that in. I like to do it separately. I, like, I used to do it first in the bottom of the pan. But sometimes it would be... Uh, you know, would get a little tendency to burn a bit. Yeah, it's been uh, good. Nicole said it's quiet. It's getting on. Yeah, it's about the same way. I've really enjoyed the summer this year, and I think a big part of that is staying out of the drama sphere has been good. All right. Yeah, lightly, just processing it. I don't want it too much. Yeah, clothing optional, that's right. So let's go ahead and add this in. And then I'm going to get a separate pot and process those. Uh, so let's get our... I find it easy to get this stuff out with a knife. Okay. Tends to come out very... Very cleanly, as you can see there. Just using a knife. Get all that goodness. Right, I'll give that a little bit of a stir. Just to get that to begin working. I'm not going to put any heat to anything yet because I want my onions and garlic to hit there, okay? Yeah, it's a, it's like a paste. It's like a concentrated puree. Hey, there we go. Jordan Blue, welcome to the ham-fisted operation, honey. Ham-fisted incorporated. Fantabulous Ms. Jordan Blue. Okay, we'll set that aside. Now we're going to get our garlic. We can set our pot aside of our sauce. I would say today we're probably going to be able to make a gallon of sauce, which will be good. That'll be good for uh, five, five to six, five to six meals. Use, uh, we're going to use two of these big, beautiful onions, too. Yeah, that duck bone was terrible. Yeah, Jordan, how did you like that? Uh, I hope you liked that video. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to make that. The uh, graveyard at uh, Virginia City set to a little Enrino Morricone.
put our onion there. Oh, one of this. Yeah, it's terrible. Those duck boats. Yeah, I will. I'm just sitting on the side. I like to start with the garlic first. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Every trip I try to do uh, two or three cinematic videos. Say hi, everyone. Can you see Janet? We didn't hear you. Hi, everybody. Missy Jen says hi, everybody. I'm sure she'll, sure she'll pop in later. So, let's see. We're going to do about uh, five. Yeah, about the. Da, 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 da. Let's see how many sections of garlic we're going to use. Probably six. If it was Nicole, she'd be using two whole garlics. With her Korean. Okay. All right, she's resting. She went up to the uh, she went up to the store for me. Yep, Nicole, garlic's good for you. Yeah, that duck boat. Uh, what a disaster. Orange. That was really terrible. Well, Nicole, I mean, you certainly put up some beautiful, uh, some beautiful pictures of the uh, food that you make. Very wonderful to see them. Well, be proud of yourself. I mean, think about uh, you know two years ago where you were. Yeah, the whole name Duck Boat. Yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't you uh, have life preservers and stuff? That's the last people that's the last people expect to happen is to die. You know, when you're going out to have fun, you just never know. I mean, I always worry when we go out in this party boat. You never know. Way out in the Pacific with these big ass, great white sharks uh, floating around. Twenty-one foot great white sharks. Terrible. Okay, Kevin said we rode duck boat years ago, and yeah, it's cool. I think it's I think it's very safe, but. A lot depends on the seamanship of the captain. So. Plus, it's pretty obvious to me in a lot of ways this country is kind of moving backwards in terms of stupidity and stuff these days. Let's get a few more sections of garlic and peel that off. Kind of like somebody screaming on the front street. Uh, let's see, I wrote a duck Oh, I've been here. Good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a pain in the ass if you're, uh, you know, it's like anything else. If you're living in a tourist area, you got to get used to the pain in the ass factor. That's for damn sure. Okay, not much more here. The garlic. All right, Nicole, thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Hope you have a good one. Okay, there we go. And I think we got uh, just a couple. I'm not going to waste this garlic, so I've got a couple more sections here. Be careful with not. Nah, I got these really sharp hankles. 
knife set that the boss gave me. I think that's enough garlic I got there. I'll go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit. Throw this away. Bottom line, the ducks are done. Oh man, they better have mega bucks or mega insurance for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a costly little adventure. And if they did anything to violate the terms of their insurance, then they're really going to be screwed because the insurance company won't stand with them. Let's slice this really thin and then chop them. So we want this to liquefy as much as possible. I find using a small knife doesn't allow it to dance all over the place. So all right. Get that baby chop super super chopped. That looks good right there. Do one more. Okay, that looks great. That looks good. All right. Yeah, Robert Ripley, a good old uh, Santa Rosa native. <coughs> Believe it or not. Use that line. He, yeah, he used to say liquefied the pan. That's right. And it used to stick stink up the joint something awful. The hacks hated it. <coughs> All right, let's get our olive oil. Sherry, how you doing, sweetie? Nice to see you. And we're going to put in about the one tablespoon into the bottom. We're going to keep that in reserve. Nice to see you, Sherry. How are you, honey? Oh, now let's get out our spices we're going to use. Italian seasoning. We're going to basically almost use this whole small container bought fresh. Got a little bit of fennel. We're going to add some fennel to that. And instead of, uh, we're going to use a bit of uh, rice wine vinegar. And this is my secret ingredient for my uh, Italian sauce. This stuff gives a little bit of umami on there, which makes it great. Makes it really good. I'm going to see if I have any other of my spices here. I think that's about it. I think I have a little bit of heat. Let's see. I add a little extra basil too. Yeah, get the Assyrian seasoning out for sure. For real, we're going to have salt. We're going to add two tablespoons of salt to that. We're going to add a little bit of extra dried oregano. And I'm going to add about uh, a half a teaspoon of the red pepper flakes to give that a little bit of a zing. So that's all the spices. I'm just going to sit them on the counter here. Okay, get the Assyrian seasoning. So I'm going to go ahead and first thing I'm going to do is put my garlic into the pan and I'm going to go ahead and process these, these onions. Right. Okay, now we'll go ahead and process our two onions that Missy Jen was kind enough to go up and grab. 
Yes, Dollar Tree seasoning. Yeah, they sell that in the uh, in the vinegar all. Most every store sells Asian rice wine vinegar. Yeah. You can also use red wine vinegar, but believe it or not, let me get my larger knife. Believe it or not, I have found that the um, that the rice wine vinegar is even tastier than that. Yeah, that's Dollar Tree seasoning. Yeah. We're waiting until fall to start our dollar start up again. Our Dollar Tree uh, taste testing. Certain things we do at certain seasons. Okay, we're now going to dice up our onions. Yeah, you need a pencil on a list, baby. This is where people that attend the Culinary Institute of America, those chef training schools, really excel now when it comes to chopping. Thank you, uh, Harvey. Much appreciated. Let me get a better knife now. Okay. That's the first thing I like to do is cut it like that, hemispherically. Okay, then I like to cut it in half and try to cut that in quarters. And uh, we want a rough cut this. We don't want this too fine. Okay. And that'll be, uh, that'll be fine. Do one more little chop here. That will be perfect. Make sure your hands are clean. Okay. You wouldn't want to go into a restaurant and eat after somebody had dirty hands and was preparing the food, which I'm sure they do. But it doesn't mean I have to. Very sharp knife, be very careful. Okay. All right. Will Jen be putting out any more coin roll hunting videos? I'm not really sure. No, I think she feels like uh, she wants to go in a few new directions. She wants to pursue. She's got something she's very passionate about, and she's working a lot of hours. On that right now, I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag. She has a really passionate uh, subject. <sighs> huh? Yeah. So I, I'm I'm happy that she can pursue something like that so i'm gonna have to back transfer this to the uh, i'm actually have to get the bigger pot and put this back in we're gonna we're gonna need to put some water in here so i can put this on the side over here let's go ahead and uh well, this is a nice thicker bottom pot. Let's go ahead and process. Let's go ahead and process our onions and garlic right in there. Okay. Okay. At the same time, I'm washing the jars, the mason jars. Okay. Go ahead and do a little cleaning here. I'm 
still here. A cleaner pot or two. Oh man, you don't have any tomatoes, Timothy? Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I gotta have a, I have got to have tomato on a hamburger. I have just got to have tomato on a hamburger. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and put the heat to this now. Gonna add a little more olive oil for what I lost. There. And let's go ahead and brown this, and then we can add our liquid, and then add our spices in. Hey, Dill, long time no see. How you doing? Dill Rogers, the pride of Chicago, Illinois. How's it going, Dill? Still enjoying the uh, RV? All right. Go ahead and uh, stir this and process this. Stir it down. Yeah, good. Things are good. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Let me see if I can get this little slack so you can see what I got going on down here. I'd love to be able to have that hold position right there. Maybe I can get a piece of tape or something a bit to hold that there. I have to do that a bit. I can't do that right now. I don't want that to fall into the pot, but you get the idea of what's going on down there. Okay. And I'll give you guys a look periodically. I don't want to make anybody dizzy here. I'm glad the old things are good. Awesome. Smartest guys I ever knew on uh, ever known on YouTube, Dill Rogers. Okay. We're gonna, this is called sweating the onions and the garlic to get all of that flavor out. I'm gonna go get a little. I think I have a little clamp. Maybe I can clamp that on there. Unfortunately, Missy Jen's the only one that can find anything around here. Knows where anything is. Let's try this. Let's try. Let's try doing this. See yeah, how that's gonna. Let's see if that can actually. Thing doesn't even want to stay on there. Nope. Sucks. Anyway, I'll work out something later, but I gotta want to get this moving. How's the van been holding up? Yeah, I'm looking at a class B deal in the uh, fall. I'm gonna be checking out a B. I want to wait till the season's over. And the van's been doing good. We went on our big trip. Been going good. Hey, Bertha. Yeah, we're going to look at a, uh, I'd like to see a Pleasure Way or a, a Road Trek. Road Trek 200 or 210 would be good. I'll, I'll bring you over once in a while. You can check out the pod uh, here. I like to kind of rough chop the onion. 
a little bit warmth to them. Nice to see you, Bertha. We used about a half a half a clove, half a head of garlic. I like to keep it moving like Chinese cooking. Mmm, house is starting to smell like Italian cooking. Woo! Sweat them just till they get translucent in there. Like being a kitchen stadium, right? Yeah, I will, Bill. Don't worry, absolutely. I absolutely will. You know me, Bill. I'm like a total pain in the ass. I put just about everything on <laughs> everything on YouTube. <laughs> Much to the delight and the horror <laughs> of people respectively. Add a little more olive oil. Yeah, I like to try to do as much in one pot as possible. Our uh, jars have been in the washing machine. They only got about 19 minutes to go. I like to start with very clean, sterile jars and tops. Even though our even though our stuff is under refrigeration, I still like to be uh, Careful. This is just about ready. That looks beautiful. No, I'm a, <laughs> I'm the furthest thing from a genius, but I've I've done this a couple times. As long as you got a heavy bottom. Yeah, we're going to be canning, but not pressure canning. We're not going to be vacuum canning in the sense of water bath and all that. This is not going to be shelf-stable product. This is going to be under constant refrigeration, this uh, product. All right, I'll give you another look down here. Yeah, Iron Chef Rosie. There you go, Mark. And there are we just about done. All right, look good. Give you guys a peek once in a while there. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this back in now. Be careful, it don't be burned with splatter, okay? Here we go. Right back in. All right. Give that a good healthy stir. And I can see those onions and that garlic bits in there. Wonderful. Just wonderful. All right. Oh, the kitchen. Hey, Thelma, how are you doing today? Nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Here comes uh, two tablespoons of salt. And this is all, of course, the taste, but I like a spicy one. I like a spicy, spicy tomato sauce. We've got our black pepper. And we're going to use one level tablespoon of that. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's a hot, hot afternoon. We're going to add... Two tablespoons of rice, Asian rice wine vinegar. 
And this is going to give a little bit of umami, umami to this. Okay. Continuing with our spices, we have our uh, Italian seasoning. And I've got about the half of a container. Oh, that smells awesome. And I'm going to put the whole half in. Okay, because this is a big batch here. Let's stir that in. Okay. And that was about uh, that was about four tablespoons. Okay. And that hit a few extra oregano. It's already an Italian seasoning, but one half of a teaspoon of extra oregano. And I want a half a teaspoon of fennel seeds, okay? And that gives a, uh, gives a nice, intensifies the Italian flavor. We have our hot pepper flakes, one teaspoon of them. You've got to have that for a little bit of uh, zing. Okay, and I think that about uh, that about wraps for our initial spicing. I'll let you guys see. Yeah, put my face label on that. Huh? Okay. It's much redder than it appears on camera because the white balance. But uh, all right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add initially about uh, four cups of water. And this thing is going to cook and reduce for a good period of time here. Let's go ahead. One, two, I think we'll just start with three cups of water. I think that'll be a good starting point. Okay. Hey, the uh, birds, the B model birds. Hey, Burgatron, how are you? Nice to see you. That is looking, that is looking good. Here, the Lady Roses were tiny shrubbed. Yeah, they were, they, uh, we definitely, uh, I did some research, Susie's talking about the Lady Banks uh, roses that we use on the fence line here. And you know, Susie, I specifically did the research to find something that was a climbing vine that would really cover that. So the neighbors didn't have to look at an ugly chain link fence. And then we could sit up here and have a lot of privacy. Hey, Tara, how you doing, beautiful? There's Tara Boo. Let's get a little bit of a taste. Oh, that's going to be a ripping sauce right there. And that is going to be a ripping sauce. It's going to need a little more spicing, but it's off to a good start right now. So we have to let it cook a while and intensify and let all of those spices kind of release a little bit. The moisture, we're using dried spices here. So we let that kind of release a little bit. It takes a while for the intensity of the flavor to, uh, to work up. Weave! Hey, Weave, how you doing? <laughs> Sometimes, Weave, I wish I was a gamer. <laughs> I got no concept of what you guys do. Man. But uh, I'm always very honored to see you stop by. Hope you're doing well. Just doing a little cleaning here. Right. 
Weave has a popular gaming channel. And Weave is a nice person. Yeah, you do see. No, I did. I did comment. That's right. I did. Uh, I did comment on one of your songs. I did. So I'm following you now. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, you sang beautifully. I can't remember what the song was. Make sure you stir your sauce once in a while, okay? Mm, man, that's going to be good. Yeah, I should be the next presenter for Hell's Kitchen. Actually, Harvey, in my next life, if you've ever seen boxing matches they had the ring girl come out round number three <laughs> yeah come on eileen okay got it we i'll be on top of it do not worry my friend i am definitely on the trail of weaves world and weave you check out my um Cemetery video in the Ghosts of Virginia City. I used a little. What is it, Jim? I need. What's the guy's name? Anio Morricone or whatever. The spaghetti westerns. Check that out. The cemetery. Uh, cemetery one. All right. Terry's like, I got another laptop. Oh, that's good. You got a laptop? Good for you. Is working her ass off. That's a hard working, uh, hard working gal. Yeah, there. Yeah, sorry I couldn't get in. I sorry I couldn't get into the hangout earlier last night. That chair was busy trying to get cleaned up here and shit. There we go, Mark. <laughs> That's funny. I think. Wow, this 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 smells so freaking good. I'm telling you guys again, the key rice, wine, vinegar, two tablespoons of that. If you're making a small batch, one tablespoon. <laughs> oh, Susie, you're too cute. Ain't nobody want to see the old broad walking around a ring. Huh? Okay, so let's put this away. Now we can just hang out. You guys look here. It's much redder than it appears on uh, camera because of the white balance of the camera. But it's got all those nice bits in it. Yeah, it tends to make it look oranges when actually it's a very deep red. So, fix an old Murphy radiogram. Have you ever heard of him? No, I've never heard of Murphy, but uh, I know that Muller tubes were the best that were ever made. Muller, Muller and vacuum tubes in the U.S. in the U.K. I mean, the most, the most sought after, the most sought after and an expensive vacuum tube besides uh, Western Electric. Ones. I can't even afford Western Electric. Stuff. Western Electric amplifiers go for. 10, 20,000, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars in the 1930s. Okay. They're legendary. Uh, yeah, well, my show is on Friday nights. I enjoy just hanging out and uh, BSing and chatting. If anybody wants a link, let me know. I'll set up the, uh, if anybody wants a link, let me know. I'll set up the uh, speakers here so that I can hear you. 
if we want to let this, this is going to really cook down a bit. Look at that steam rising now, huh? Now we're going to add our fourth cup of water here. And everything is pretty much cleaned up in the kitchen. I don't like to leave a mess for Jen in here. All right. Yeah, this should get us. Uh, this should get us a good, a good gallon and a half of uh, sauce here. I'm thinking. Got to be very careful handling this stuff, though. <sighs> yeah, you know what? I don't. I don't believe in leaving a mess for Jen. Jen does enough stuff around here with that cleaning up after. She cleans up enough after my messes, so. I have to honor her work, and I try not to leave her a mess on set on Friday nights too. But make sure everything's not always perfect, but make sure everything's all cleaned up for her. So she gives a hundred percent for me. Oh, yeah, that's looking good, that sauce. And we want to reduce that down to the right thickness. When we reduce that down, yeah, uh, Harvey, I buy, uh, Harvey says you can buy cheaper Russian baths. I buy the Svetlanas from Russia. I have lots of Svetlanas, and I have a lot of red stars from uh, Russia, okay? I do, I mean, from China. I buy a, buy a lot of the Chinese. Because the Russians remanufacture the old American tubes. Terry says, I always wanted to kiss a moose on the lips. Really? <laughs> and to think I always just wanted to kiss Raquel Welsh on the lips, right? I could have had a moose. Well, I tried, you know, I'm not as I'm not as thoughtful as uh as Missy Jen is, but uh, I work, I'm, I'm aware of myself, you know, I think about things. Yeah, moose are kind of big and mean, you know, they can be scary. I'm going to reduce this heat down. Be back in one minute. Oh, I'm trying to think of, maybe I can set this up. Let me get my little tripod stand here. This might be able to sustain. You guys can kind of, because they say a watch pot never boils. Yeah, the Chinese valves are pretty good. I found most everything I got out of there it has not been disappointing to me. All right, there it is. Okay. All right, that look good. We're gonna let that reduce down to a nice sauce consistency. Okay, so just being on that stand gives you guys a little bit of a look for a couple minutes and I will be right back.
you guys are watching the sauce cam. Hmm? The trick now is getting a nice reduction on this so it becomes a nice thick sauce. Not too thick, but thick enough that uh, it doesn't turn to water on the pan. On the plate. How's that sauce looking? Let's make sure we throw. We don't do not cover it. You want the steam. You want that moisture to start moving away now. Oh, the taste is amazing. All right, put you guys back up on here. The yeah, the EL eighty fours, yep. Yeah, they're the big. They're the uh, they're the real. They're a big one. The EL eighty fours. Fisher uses a lot of them. And the big uh, Western Electric 300B output tubes. All right, I'm going to pull up a seat, and we can sit and chat a while, and we can let that uh, work down. I'm going to remove the – let's remove the – let's put these on the counter now. We've got the stuff coming out. Lori, how are you doing, sweetie? Nice to see you. There's my Vegas gal. Lori, we're making some uh, some sauce from our own tomatoes here on the rancho. Huh? Always nice to see. Just like Mama used to make. Woo! My Mama never made anything. My mom just like hot dogs Monday night, and I don't know. Will be Tuesday would be pork chop. Wednesday would be chicken. Thursday would be spaghetti. Friday would be fish. Saturday would be hamburger. Sunday would be like a roast or a steak or something. That was all we had. We had 11 people. So yeah, you can go back and replay it, uh, Lori. So I'm going to open this up. You can see we got all of our, it's very important that these be very clean. We're not vacuum sealing. We're going to be keeping this under refrigeration, but we still want to be very, very meticulously clean in our handling. How is Lori Green today? Lori said, I'm an Italian stepmom, and I never learned her sauce was killer. That's cool. It's really not that hard to make. Really not that hard. What I'm doing is just sitting the... Uh, Prepping these and getting these ready for yeah, I like to do I like to do as much from scratch as possible. I think we're probably only gonna need five of these, so I had Jen wash them all though. So we put them all in the washing machine. Okay. All right. That looks pretty good. And then we've got all of our lids here. Just kind of dry them a little bit and sit them on the side. So what are you doing today, Lori? What are you and Howard up to today? 
I was going to go to LA today to confident and watch the dog show. Oh, okay. Who's uh? Who were you going to go see? Oh, I will do Harvey. She'll be uh, she'll be around. Jen will stop by. I think uh, she's engaged in a special mission lately. So. Just remember to stir this sauce once in a while. Okay, this is going to get very intense. This this sauce has a real kick to it, which is good. I don't like a dull sauce. I like to have a strong sauce for lasagnas and pizzas and all that. That's the way to do it. Surprised, uh, surprised Miss Ellie hasn't stopped by. Huh? Nobody was someone like Howard. Oh, okay. Oh, he ended up. Okay, so at least he went. That's cool. Yeah, tell Howie I said hi. All right. Let me turn this heat real low. Here. Hey, Eva. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing okay. Yeah, I'll come back later and I'll fill in the description box on uh, on it. And a lot of the final is always to taste. So you have to always taste it periodically to see. You know, because uh, in a couple minutes, well, it's probably time right now. I like to add I like to add two teaspoons of sugar and that cuts the acidity. Sometimes I use carrot, diced carrot, very finely chopped. Sometimes I use sugar. Today I just use a little bit of sugar and it helps knock the edge off of the acidity. I, I guess you could freeze it, Lori. I guess you could. I don't know why you couldn't. This tends to make the cam tends to make it look oranger, but it's a it's definitely a red uh, red color. Yeah, you definitely need the sugar to knock the edge off. But uh, one good trick I learned from uh, America's Test Kitchen, Christopher, whatever his name is, a very good show. I used to watch, and he said it was even better. No meat in this, Lori. This is just straight up a marinara sauce. Um, he said that, uh, you know, processing two carrot, you know, one whole carrot, put it in a food processor and then add that in. That also does a good job of uh, cutting the cutting the acidity to it. So, yeah, this is coming along good. And the trick is we want to bring this to a point where it is uh, – Thick, and we're a long way from that uh, from that point. If we were to spoon this on right now, it would just liquefy, and just the plate would just be a pool of water underneath of your pasta. So, uh, did you have a chance to read my email? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's like me. I got accepted into the FBI Academy, but by that time that letter came, I was already uh, I was already working in Hong Kong. So. And uh, it basically doubled the money I've made at the FBI. I would have made at the FBI. Plus, I didn't have to have anybody shooting at me, you know. And you know, because you start in the FBI. Uh, okay, you start in the FBI, and um, you know you're going to be posted to Baltimore, Detroit. Washington D.C., you know all the Gary and Danny, all these all these garden spots of America. So there's Missy J.
Missy Jen likes to uh, likes to ride to back forty and make sure. Yeah, Gary, Indiana. At the time I applied, you had to sign off that you understand that this is your this is with this group of people going, and this will likely be your posting designation. And they gave you like five cities: Baltimore, Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, Cupcake said hi, Jen. Why don't you just wheel in a second and say hi? I got a lot of people saying hi all the time here. Oh, that sauce is that that is kick ass right there. Woo! Oh man. The flavor of that is amazing. We just have to let that reduce to a sauce now. It's probably coming out to a gallon or so. Uh, Tara said hi. Cupcake. Well, I'm not, uh, yeah, secrets. I mean, I applied for the CIA, but when it came time for the lie detector test and they start to ask, it, you know, are you gay? And I mean, I don't know if I am or not, but, uh, you know, like, thank you very much. Here's your meal voucher, your hotel thing. And uh, we won't be needing you anymore. Bye. What were you doing out back? You already have to go, but I can't say on the camera. All right. Well, we got to kind of keep your eye on the sauce for a second then. All right. I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Missy Jen for a couple of minutes. In the back corner. In the back corner. Yeah, the way in the back. Okay. Hi, Harvey. Well, that pot looks bigger than me. <laughs> what are you doing? In there? Hi, Sherry. How's everybody doing? How are you? Hi, Lori. Nice and deep, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go look. I don't have any strength left in my arms. Hi, Mike. Hi, some kisses to y'all. Hi, BBE. I was busy outside for a little bit doing some a little project. It's getting hot outside. How's everybody doing? Yeah, Georgie's I'm keeping an eye up on everything. Give me that to straight to the desk. What y'all doing besides watching? Watching anybody doing anything exciting? How's the weather? Where y'all at? Doing good, Chapsy. That's good, Cuppers. Cupcake. That I'm glad to hear that. Hi, Terabu. How's the weather down south? You made pea salad and it's 90 degrees. Yeah, Rosie should open a restaurant. 
make a killing, but you know what? My uh, BBE running a restaurant and everything is a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. I don't know if, if she wants to do that in her retirement. Love you too, Terrible. That looks good, Jess. Yeah, I gotta finish that up eventually. Oh, that looks okay. Strength, I just, I can't do it anymore. We need a horse at the venture, yeah, we need uh, like she wants a, her tractor. Sherry said we're cooking at hey BBE, how are you? Nice to see you. Ribs and sausage, yummy, yummy, yeah, yummy. That's good. We got the great uh, beta boy Elvis in the house. We're gonna have a tri-tip tonight tonight uh, later in the afternoon. You're yeah, having a tri-tip. We're making some sauce, BBE. Nice sauce. Yeah, we need a horse. Huh? Carol will have to teach us teach us how to ride it. Caught on something there. From our own tomatoes. There it is. It looks a little yellow. It's much redder in real. It's the white balance on this camera is kind of off. Yeah, it reminded me of good thing. You remember that when you keep stirring the sauce? Don't stop. Remember, keep stirring that sauce. Yeah, I was just thinking of that. Keep stirring that sauce, baby. That's it. That was a great movie. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, thank you, BBE. It's kind of compact, but I designed it just to give you a look around. Like, I, I try to use the building as much as possible, like here with the uh, Bosch dishwasher built in got the uh, got the spice rack down here that comes out real nice that works out good uh, yeah we got the uh, Fisher Patel the uh, five burner five burner stove here with the wok burner in the middle and it's got the convection oven with the, um, you know, with the fan for nice uniform cooking. There, so I just wish it was bigger. I don't have a lot of counter room. And every time I talk to Missy Jen about expanding the house and doing a little addition on it, she starts to, <laughs> she starts to get her suitcase and starts to pack her shit. To <laughs> yeah. She's got enough uh, projects around here. Yeah, I like the stainless. Uh, I, I do like the stainless uh, with the uh, granite counter and the maple wood, the light maple wood. It makes a nice uh, makes a nice combination. The wood and everything. We, we've had a lot of good eating off that stove, haven't we, Jen? Sarah's going to buy a disco ball. There you go. Light it up, girl. Yeah. Do it. nice when you play your games. Yeah, I don't mean to block you, Jen. That's okay. You got to keep stirring the sauce. Keep stirring the sauce. Stir the sauce. Got to have that in a nice, Bit consistent. Well, a hundred dollars for a mirror, boy. Yeah, I like it, BBE. It's kind of nice. Uh, BBE, we missed you last night. Uh, your girlfriend was looking for you. You were MIA. The great BBE. You know, BBE has a crush at boy. You know, on him. You know who it is. Free Birdie, Susan. Yep, Birdie. Yep. <laughs> She's absolutely smitten. Yeah. Hey, Mike Hi, G. Mike. How you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you, Mikey. What's going on today? 
my friend. Yeah, she's a real, she's a real pal. Harvey's my keepster, and that's it. I was like one of my favorite movies, Goodfellas, with the, you know, that last, that last day when everybody's freaking out, and the helicopters overhead, and they're racing in the car. He's on the phone. You better keep stirring that sauce. Don't stop stirring that sauce. They're inside packing up their drugs and shit. Freebird's helping me with the keto. Wow. I wish he'd help me. Yeah, it's funny how I actually last night had a dream that I was a bodyguard for somebody and I had. You don't want to fuck with James. And I actually killed two people in a cornfield with a yellow pencil. Stuff in the neck like that. Oh, man. Guy Jen has very violent sort of uh, dreams, it's right? Crazy. My dreams are like falling off a building or something. Jen's are very... Uh, it's you know, crazy. She's usually on the giving end of some it pain to somebody. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rosie, you're a whore. You're a whore. Yeah. That's it. Remember that. I remember mean, seeing in Goodfellas where Karen goes to the apartment building where uh, where what's his name's uh, Henry's girlfriend is. You whore! She's on the uh, she's on the outside speaker. You know, you whore! Yeah, okay, you want a piece? You fucking my husband! You whore! <sighs> That's cool, Lars. Hey, Sean. How you hey, doing? Sean. Nice to see you. I'm trying to think, Lori. Lori, if you had to, what's the deal with the keto diet? What's it built on? What's the keto? I mean, you're not a big, you're not a big person, Lori. What's the keto diet built on? I have no idea. I'm not even sure what the principles of the keto diet are. Uh, Must be on keto acidosis or something. Fat. Okay, so that's a. Uh, it almost sounds like Atkins then, BBE. I'm not from more than balance. I'm very high from good people. Okay, it's uh, very high in protein. Okay. Interesting. I had I always had great success on Atkins very rapidly. Just cutting out all carbs and well you gotta make sure you cut all the carbs out. That'll keep your blood sugar down. <laughs> yeah. And then drink protein, protein shakes. Uh, I got my mind here, chocolate protein. <laughs> Is it Adwala? Adwala, yeah. yeah. GMO free. Wow, BBE, like I lost 40 pounds on uh, Atkins in 2009. Huh. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm dropping weight fast. And that's really cool. How long have you been on it, uh, Lori? <laughs> Tara. <laughs> Tara, you know what? <laughs> Honey, you're going to be institutionalized one day, you know. <laughs> you talk like that, they're taking notes out there. Wow, Lori says, I lost 15, but I'm tired. So, yeah, I mean, you're not a big person, Lori. I don't know why you would even need to be on a diet, you know, having met you in person. One month yesterday, that's awesome. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, Missy Man, Missy Jen was in the bodybuilding. Yeah. I always think Missy Jen's a frustrated pro wrestler. Yeah, mm. I used Show to me be your into, I used to be uh, in the bodybuilding. I did uh, 
60 minutes, 60 minutes power running, and then I would work out two hours after that on weights. Lifting weights, I was like, <laughs> Susie. I was like, and then I'd go home and I'd be like, what can I do next? I drink high protein shakes and. I got to lose weight. Yes, a lot more energy. The best thing I did. Well, Laura, you also, I saw you on a hangout. I was watching the hangout, and you talked about you switched, cut over to caffeine free to deca de decaf coffee. Mm. That is a good, good sauce. That is a good sauce. That's coming along really good. That's a real intensity. <sighs> yep, no caffeine. How has that affected your sleeping, Laurie? Because you used to be a night owl. I see you up uh, on Hangouts late. Have you slept better? I'm trying to get uh, Jen to cut down that. That was two weeks of a slight headache. Now I'll never go back to it. That was okay. Yeah, because Cupcake's like, no caffeine. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, no change in sleeping. Harvey said, I used to love it. I once trained with Arnold when he came over to the UK to see one of his best friends, Jim, in East London. And he used to teach me some German, all swear words. I don't sleep myself, Lori. If I get uh, if I get four hours of sleep a night, I consider it good to go, four to five. I'm always afraid I'm missing something. I did, I did uh, use Arnold's uh, workout program. The 90 degree angle workout system. G2. Oh, all those midnight baking. Yeah. We killed that coconut pie. That is gone. My God, that was good. What a chance. Yeah. Oh, I could be a millionaire just producing that one fucking pie and selling it. I mean, that thing was, that thing was off the chain. That thing was off the chain. Yeah, I get about five hours. Well, I'm good to go I mean, four to five. He's not, not a comedian anymore. He's not really a funny man. Well, no, he I wasn't guess. really a funny governor, I can tell you that. He's, he's, he's rather grumpy nowadays. He, uh, he sucked as a governor. I've seen people run into him, and uh, he's rather grumpy. Oh, that's going to be some good. I'd probably that'll reduce down to a gallon. I'm going to go find a tunnel in the garage. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, Harvey. As as you get older, and I guess he's fighting very hard to, you know, he got all flabby. <laughs> He got all fluffy and stuff, and then now uh, he's. I watch him, and I watch Sylvester Stallone, and I watch all them old gentlemen. You know, they're all working so hard on regaining the muscles that they lost and everything, and they're battling that so hard, and it's, it's like. It's, it's almost heartbreaking, you know, because I mean, when they like when you go towards 70 and it's like you just don't have the testosterone anymore. I gotta find that damn funnel or I'm gonna burn the shit out of myself with that transfer. Well, I was really impressed with Stallone, man. He like. For his age, well, he was doing some weightlifting that in a video not too long ago. Wow, I was really impressed. 
But yeah, when you get old in the set towards the 70s, you eventually have to say, well, my day's over. It's just like, uh, what was Mr. He was like Mr. Olympia, the black gentleman. Uh, he had the hip replacements. Uh, Ronnie Coleman. I've been watching Ronnie Coleman. And it's like, now what's Ronnie Coleman? It's, it's so sad to see him like he, he's got the calcified elbows and everything from the steroids. And he was such a big guy and now he's just really battling. Fighting to be a little muscular. One of the people that I'm really impressed with is uh, the, the guy that played Incredible Hulk, Luke Farino. He, he is in his crazy age, still looks really good. I thought he died. No, he's not dead. Not there. I don't know. You follow all those uh, people. I don't really follow that. This is reduced to about half now. But anyway, it's like you have golden years, and then and you enjoy them, and you need to put money away, and after that, you know, you're finished. It's just the way it is. Yeah. There That's was. Funny. I don't even know. You know, like wrestling went through these cycles. It was real big in the 80s and 90s, and with Hulk Hogan, and it seemed to reach its peak. No, your body just is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Missy Jen likes big tits, so that's it. You know, <laughs> that's funny as hell, cupcake. <laughs> Holy shit! And I. Uh, um, you drinking that? You left that out. You want to put it away? Dave, or? the fisherman uploaded the uh, of one of the episodes of The Incredible Hulk, and I watched it. It was really nice. I thought you were going to say Dave had big tits. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really nice. Dave's yeah, got a nice song. belly on. <laughs> 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 this is the C. Lou Ferrando in the uh, Incredible Hulk, like, Argh. Yeah, I love him in the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, David Banner, right? Yep, David Bruce Banner. I've been enjoying, uh, I don't know, uh, my favorite Martian mm -hmm. came up in my feed. Roy Walston and uh, uh, Bill Bixby, so I've been enjoying that, catching some of them. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Luke Perrin is a really nice guy. He actually is a very humble guy. We said Andre the Giant was a nice guy too, right? Yes, he was from France. A gentle giant. He had a very rough life. Well, the sauce has been about two hours. hours. This baby is really looking good. Me too. Bill Bixby always had this beautiful smile on him. Yeah, Bill Bixby was great. Courtship of Eddie's father. And... Okay. You can see the original level of the sauce was here. So we've had quite a reduction here. Quite a reduction, a very beautiful sauce. So a little bit more, and that should be, we should call that good to go. Yeah, the courtship of Eddie's father. Yeah. I used to watch the uh, family affair, too. Only because I really like Sebastian Cabot. He was cool. 
What's cooking, Cassidy? We're making some uh, Italian sauce from our own tomatoes today. So we're getting pretty close. And we're getting pretty close. Yeah, the Eddie Show. Hey, Deb, nice to see you. Good afternoon to you. Hi, Deb. Deb's holding down the port in uh, Iowa with Dave out of town. We were just talking about Dave's tits, Deb. <laughs> yeah, he always walked away into the sunset with his backpack. Yeah, I never watched that show too much. Oh, thank you, Deb. Thank you. It's it's cool for the kitchen today. Does anybody remember how the Incredible Hulk actually died the last episode? Uh, I, don't know, huh? I don't know. Who knows how the Incredible Hulk finally died in the very last uh, Let me see. Put a bullet episode. in his own head? No. Okay. Does he, anybody know? Does he, anybody he, know? Yeah, he, uh, he ate some bad chicken. No. No. Okay. <laughs> Dave Johnson had kids. Okay. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk was on an airplane, and he fell out of the airplane. He landed on the tarmac. That sounds ugly. And then turn into David, and then he died. Oh, well, Harvey said he fell from a building. No, he fell out of a he fell out of a, out of a plane. I expect to you that, yeah, I remember Harvey, I have, I have watched The Incredible Hulk almost every single episode from the very first one where he had his gamma radiation accident to the very last one where he died. Yeah, the Incredible Hulk was my childhood hero. If you guys get a chance today, check out the uh, Virginia City Cemetery, The Good, The Bad, and The Dead. There, I think you'll enjoy that set to And see, uh, what's the guy's name? The musician that did the composition, Maracone. What's his first name? Ennio. Ennio Morricone. Yeah, Ennio Morricone. The final shootout scene at the cemetery. You might really enjoy that. It's a nice cinematic experience. The Swamp Thing, the only one I like is the one in black and white. Yeah, that's right, Harvey. His wife died in the first episode in the car crash. Yeah, it seems to me he died pretty young, too, Bill Bixby, of cancer or something. Yeah, Bill Bixby died of cancer. Yeah, his. Is. 50, yeah, he's young. I mean, young, didn't I feel like an old bat walking around the uh, Virginia City Cemetery? Right, all these people are 30, 40, 50 dead. One of them's like a guy lifted 55, the ripe old age of 55. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> Might as well just uh, jump in next to you guys right here. Oh, boy. Yeah, that reporter was always right there, that skinny, skinny ass guy. Well, they were back in the days all skinny. But yeah, McGee, McGee was his name. Hi, hey, Nathan. Nathan. How are you, sweetie? Cupcake, you got to check out my video. You absolutely got to check it out. That, uh, Graveyard just lends itself to beautiful cinematic uh, experience there. 
Oh, that's awesome. Good. Yeah, they got a Catholic area. They got the Masons have an area. And yeah, I hope you're doing good, Nathan. Seven other areas. Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing good. It's not doesn't seem quite as hot as yesterday. Yeah, we got an overcast. We got a little bit of I think we got fire, smoke, and some other stuff in the air here. here. We're gonna let this go about fifteen more. Let you guys see. Yeah, Dev the RN likes those cinematic type videos. Okay, there we go. Yeah, my yeah, Tara's mom dated Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Just short of terminal six prostate. Yeah, Bill Bixby. Yeah, these days they probably could have saved him. You know, yeah, prostate cancer. If you catch it early, that can be fixed. Uh, just thinking, could be terror. Could have been terror, Chong. Yeah, terror, Chong. <laughs> Riding on a big white horse. Yeah, terror on her Palomino, huh? Yeah. I love Tommy Chong. I actually like Tommy Chong better than Cheech Marin myself. There was just something uber cool about him. Yeah, the leaky pipe is fixed and the hole is filled. And we're all good to go. The rosy girls get it all. Fixed yesterday because we are with this heat in need right away to. Oh, you take the finasteride? Yeah, the you know what, Harvey? The finasteride is very powerful. Uh, yeah, that's an anti, it's an androgen. Anti I'm very familiar with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Bean, how you doing, Bean? Bean's been kind of a wall for a bit, huh? Bean's that been, finesse red will really help you shrink the prostate. Bean's been living the life. Bean has been living the life. I oh, just saw is really coming along good. Yeah, Mark said I saw Cheech and Chong at Harris Council Bluff several years ago. That's cool. I don't guess. Uh, I don't guess Cheech Martin is doing anything lately. It was there was a time he was really hot in all the movies. Beans like I'm around. Yeah, Beans always Beans lurking, huh? Are you sweating over that stove? No, but I'm enjoying the way this sauce came together today. This is just beautiful. Just living month by month. No, I'm not really. I'm, you know, Nathan. We don't have the humidity that you have in uh, Toronto. There, it's very dry. We got the doors open, the windows open. We got a slight draft coming through the house. Yeah, it's not too bad. So it is not too shabby. Not too shabby. It was actually uh, when I was bikini baking Friday night. It didn't. Uh, I wasn't real comfortable then. It was hot as hell in here. Right, so there you go, Harry. That's good news. Hey, Eastwater, how you doing? Yeah, Nathan said it's so muggy here, it's hard to see across the lake. Yeah. You're, uh, if I recall, you're around Toronto, right, Nathan? One of our good Facebook friends. The coconut pie was so good, it's already <laughs> gone. We finished it. We finished it. I couldn't help it. I could not help it. That 
pie was so off the chart that meringue and that uh, crust on that just it was brutal i just couldn't stay away from it. oh yeah beans like trying to stay out of court huh <laughs> bean that's the theme for 2018 is dentists and lawyers <laughs> that's the boy theme for 2018 lawyers and dentists huh That is it. This is almost, almost thick enough. You want to make sure it's thick enough. And then some I didn't put before. It just gets a little watery out on the plate and stuff. So you want to make sure the, the thickness is all there. Well, don't you think that's right? Yeah, the lawyers, the lawyers and the dentists. I mean, this was a year. And I was right in the mix with the dental stuff, Jen. When that damn cap came off in April. It was all downhill. The rest of this, the rest of the spring was terrible for me, just terrible. I went in the dentist. He's like, "Oh, I got uh, real bad news. The tooth next to it, next to it, needs a crown too." I'm like, "Holy shit! Two root canals in one week, and I finally got the crowns." Yeah, my mouth is killing me. Yeah, two in a week, and it wasn't until what, Jen, mid. Mid July, it was finally done. Mage, three months of yeah. gone through all that bullshit. Yeah. Now I got. Uh, oh, April is terrible. April is a terrible month for me. August is usually a good month. Things bad happen to me in April. Things good usually happen in August. Oh no, thirteen extractions. Yes, yeah, beans like I just had another crown. Must be the age. Yeah. I didn't really do too much in painkillers. I just take extra. I just took some Tylenol. Jen gave me a naproxen once in a while. There's only one good painkiller, and that's morphine injection. But the sad thing is you can't get it. And yeah, it's, that's a good thing. And it's addicting, so that's another bad thing. That's a good thing. Well, we're just about ready to uh, pour it in. I'll give you guys a look. Forget about the rugby, Missy there Jen. There, the there it is. I was lying there on the chopper. And There's I was America's face of drug addiction I was right there. The pain that gave me the injection of the morphine, and I was fine. Tell everybody okay. you have. Tell everybody you're the new face of drug addiction in America. I know such thing. I've been like cutting, cutting off everything that I could cut off. But I go. had a morphine injection once in an ambulance, and it was a lifesaver. In the ambulance. All right. Scene. When you start to leave a trail behind with your spoon, you're getting to the point where the sauce is basically done. You can see it's starting to leave a trail behind when you go across. We need to make sure this is thick enough that it doesn't water down when it hits pasta, right? Okay. All right. Bean said, I just made homemade tater salad. Woo! Awesome. Who says that Boyd doesn't have talent? Yeah, that's it, Thelma Lou. That's exactly right. Jenna has been on a gradual reduction of uh, medications and stuff, so that's a good thing. All right. Rocket, baby, rocket. That's it. All right. You know what I think? This is, uh, once again, guys, not to be pimping, but make sure you check out that Virginia City Cemetery video. Okay, I think you'll really love that. Set to the music from the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's a beautiful cemetery, scary, but. Uh, <clears throat> and check out the ghosts of Virginia City too. Okay, and I got I got uh, Reno coming out tomorrow. Nighttime in Reno, street scenes, mugs, thugs, cool people, cops, everything. I 
I think that's just about there. What is that, Virginia? Virginia City. Oh, thank you, Nathan. Who told you that? I just made it myself. Um, I don't know. I think I looked up the basic recipe. Cupcake. Cupcake said, who taught you to make this up? I, I looked up the basic recipe, and then I started to adjust things to taste. No, I don't think I've been on the uh, I've been on the elliptical. Hey, Marshall, I've been on the elliptical machine, so I think that's been helping. If you look at my legs, I think that's been helping a lot on uh, keeping them firm. <laughs> Thelma said, "I love walking through cemeteries." What's good, Marshall? What's going on? What's going on in Chi Town? All right, what do you say we put this up now? Yeah, I'm addicted to the elliptical now. I try to do uh, four days a week on that for an hour at a time. All right, we're going to turn the heat off for that. Now we're going to get a uh, saucepan, and we're going to start to... All these glasses have been washed out. Yeah, check it out. You'll enjoy it. It's set to the music of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into these cinematic videos. And just remind yourself that it's all shot with a cell phone camera. So, all right, we got our nice funnel, and I like to use a nice big one. One there. Oh, that's great. Thelma says, I walk a lot now and do light weights. I've lost almost 20 pounds. I really want to start walking. I really want to start. Oh, man. You're roasting in the royal under the shade in your 12 volt fan. Wow. That sucks, Marshall. I don't know how you sustain in Chicago without uh, in that heat and humidity. Let's go ahead and I scoop a bit of that. I'm gonna look at that. Uh, no, nope. you know what? I'm gonna have to reduce that some more. That's too, still too. I'm gonna put the heat to that for a little longer. It's got to be just thick enough. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, it would these days to be there. Yeah, the bigger the better. Oh, Eastwater. No, I've got I got so many playlists on the channel of adventures and trips and stuff and moonshining and uh, it's not as good as the channel I lost, but there's a lot of good stuff on there. You can really enjoy it. Yeah, I need to reduce this a little bit more. I wanted velvety. I don't want the appearance of any uh, pools of water to be this. Oh, I'm crying when I don't have 50 amps. I need both AC. Yeah, you got to have 50 amp uh, power. Oh, Cupcake said it's 68 in here at all time because of my medicine. Yeah, you need to have that. Oh, that's great, Thelma. I'm thinking about getting YouTube uh, premium too because I can download stuff easier. Go get an annual at a water park. Yeah, that's a good idea. Go to a, uh, yeah, Marshall, go to a uh, water park. How long has it been cooking? Oh, I think I started about 11 o'clock. That's cool, Thelma. So it's now at the point, you, it's the skill point. You need to reduce it to a point. You need to reduce it to a point where it's not going to be watery when you go to use it on the pasta. So it's got to have some thickness to it. 
I'm not sure, Nathan. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out because a lot of times I want to download something and extract the music from it. And you used to be able to do that with a YouTube downloader. And I've only got it on one of my computers, and they keep asking me to try to upgrade that thing because they want to remove the ability to download YouTube videos. So I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so I'm thinking about doing that because it make it easier to just download and extract things that I need to pull music off of videos and stuff. So um, do you and Jen have the PG need disability discount? It cuts my billing. Uh I'm going to say our our bill is so cheap now. <laughs> yeah, Lori. I'm the one that asked Dave to go on camera for his dinner. You know, with his, he, he had a big-ass steak, and then he had a hamburger and fries as backup. <laughs> uh, Let's see, it's a nasty, rainy, humid day. I'm in Connecticut, it's almost 5 p.m., not six hours. You can go, no, no, I've been at this for about uh, two and a half hours. So I think I think we're just about there. But this is the point where you have to have the eye of the sauce to really understand. Sometimes I've made sauce and I haven't cooked it down enough. So when I go to add it to the pasta, then it separates to water at the bottom of the plate. I don't want my sauce to break. It's called breaking of sauce, so I don't want it to break. So Sean says during summer my bill is three seventy and six hundred winter with the fifty with the fifty percent discount. Sean, what area are you in? What area are you in? It's God our our summer bill is about $60 a month. And our winter bill is about 100 a month. Oh, El Dorado, yeah, you need it, El Dorado County. Okay, we get, the, we get the marine influence here. So it's always, you know, 98% of the time, it's, we have to, you know, it gets chilly at night. It's up to 100 during the day, but it goes down to 52 overnight. So an extremely wide temperature range. Yeah, your summer bill is 95, winter is 150. Nathan, you're like in a condo unit, right? Are you in an apartment or a condo? Oh, shit. yeah, see, it's not in the 80s here. It's comfortable. Jackie! Jackie, my girl, where you been? I've been living life, Rosie. <laughs> I'm not like you, Rosie, the old squirrel on YouTube. <laughs> hey, Anna Alexis, how you doing, sweetheart? Thanks for your nice uh, compliments on the uh, video. I put up another one with the graveyard at Cemetery uh, in Virginia City. I think you'll really enjoy that one. Uh, this is what we use to make moonshine in our mash. This is our mash pot. I think we used about uh, 40 tomatoes, Lori. You're going to use about, uh, yeah, I guess this, this kind of like makes me look spelt. I don't know if I'm really spelt, but uh, thank you. We use about uh, 10, 10, 10 to 15 tomatoes per quart. So we're going to, this will be done in three different uh, batches this summer. This is just batch number one. Yeah, we added a little bit of sugar, two, tea, uh, two teaspoons of sugar, and uh, uh, two onions, half of a head of garlic. We used uh, probably 15 pounds of tomatoes. I used uh, probably four tablespoons of Italian seasoning, a teaspoon of uh, basil, a teaspoon of oregano leaf, uh, one teaspoon of uh, pepper flakes, and a tablespoon of pepper, and a two tablespoons of salt. So that's the basic. 
and then two tablespoons of rice wine, Asian rice wine vinegar. Yeah, Jack is like cooking hangouts are my favorites. All right, and that that sauce is officially done. Let's go go ahead and get our pot in action. Get this transferred. Yep, mash. Yeah, we make moonshine here. We used to make it all the time. Now it's just a once a year, just for old time's sake. All right. All right, let's get our funnel. This is dangerous. You got to be careful with this stuff. You do not want to get splashed. Here, start with that. And I think we'll probably yield a gallon today. And that's a pretty, pretty righteous looking, uh, pretty righteous looking sauce right there. Let's sit that there for a minute. Now we're going to put our carefully put our uh, top on there and immediately seal that down. We're not going to water bath it because this will be under a refrigeration. Okay, and there is our jarred sauce there. Everybody's like, ah. Oh, Nice to see you cooking with some clothes on, Rosie. <laughs> you guys are too funny. Right, let's get up our next jar here. Be careful of splashing. You will get burned on this stuff. You will get burned. Just a Tad more in there. To bring that level up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Get them in good and tight, and then these will pull down and seal real good. Okay, there's our second quart. This is our own tomatoes, Anna. This is our own tomatoes. And we use this all year long. We get about uh, four gallons when we're all done the season. And we just use it all year long. Lasagnas, pizzas. It's a good general duty. Uh, it's a good general duty sauce. Yeah, we don't need to seal, but they do seal very well. They still seal excellently. These will actually pull down, and if I go to use one and it doesn't have a, I don't use it. Okay. Even under refrigeration, I still don't use it. Very careful about uh, cooking and. Yeah, that's going to come out. I figured that would come out to about one gallon. We yielded, uh, we yielded up one gallon today. The top's on good and tight. Yeah, it seems like I'll be over dinner in seven days. So there it is, our beautiful sauce. You can see some of the garlic bits and onion in there. I'm going to go, up, get, go ahead and just cap these other jars because they were... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a seat and just chat with you guys now. As soon as I do a little bit of cleanup, I'm going to cap these other jars because they have been cleaned today and uh, sterilized. So we're not going to need them until the next run. And I want to I want to get a taste of this. Hmm. 
Wow. Woo. Oh, that is that is like uh that is like unbelievably good right there. I'm not gonna waste that, I'm just treating myself to a sauce. <laughs> Anna, you'd be welcome. You're one of my favorite people on uh Favorite people on YouTube, you actually watch my videos. <laughs> yeah, get a piece of bread. Mm. Woo, that's good. Yeah, I wish I had some of my. I didn't make any Italian bread today. We're actually having tri tip tonight. Uh, yeah. Okay, Nathan, take care. Yeah, you can lower the salt to just a teaspoon. I use two tablespoons because, uh, you know, a half of a half of a tablespoon per quart, which is about right. Which is about right. You can certainly use less. Mm, 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 mm. Man, I'll tell you, cupcake always has some winning fucking ideas, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wouldn't that be good? Hey, 21. How are you, my friend? Cupcake, you're a genius. Hey, Dixie. I got to be careful. I don't want to be on a Tony Mullen carry. Right? Jen, we got uh, we got one gallon today, which wasn't bad. So for our first batch, okay. Jen's like you didn't just get that on the floor, did you? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can you get that stick back in? <laughs> She's gonna go get the stick again and <laughs> chase me, chase me around. Yeah, she said, get a plate. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, man, that is great. Uh. Oh, yeah. Woo! Get a plate, get a plate. <laughs> yeah, Harvey, there you go. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what her name? Sorry, I don't know. Her. Missy Jen. Her name is Missy Jen. Yeah, but you can taste it too, Anna. I cooked you up a big, beautiful plate of. Uh, Spaghetti, just no, no meatballs, just so you can appreciate just the sauce, because uh, uh, that sauce has like the perfect amount of heat in it. Yeah, yeah, bean sprouts. Like you needed some butter, though. Bean sprout. I'm gonna tell you, honey. If I had your brain. Imagine where I'd be in life. <laughs> Thank you for the thumbs up uh, today. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Thelma says, I, I love pottering around in the kitchen. Yeah, I like to make as much from scratch as possible, especially when it comes to baked goods. Our coconut cake, our coconut pie, I mean, God, that was good. Oh, 
That was so freaking good. Cleaning out this big plastic thing on the ass. Small price to pay. Yeah, we ate all the pie. I'm embarrassed to say some what we did. I'm embarrassed to say. First thing this morning. I was on Cooper's last night, and for the first time ever, I fell asleep. That's Missy Jen Eastwater. I fell asleep at the keyboard. Actually punched myself out of the room. I didn't even remember doing it. It never happened. I was really tired from doing all that work in the yard. Oh man, the pie was amazing, Anna. That pie was just amazing. If I say so myself. It wasn't that bad because instead of using half and half for cream, yeah, be over good over a fish too, Lori. Be good over any of that. Any of that. That takes care of our moonshine pot. Yeah, Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island always made coconut cream pie. Yeah. Are you saying, um, what is it? I can't do it. Saying I'm Mary Ann? <laughs> How often nighttime pie eating is a regular thing? I do uh, Friday nights. Uh, bikini baking. Uh, Bro, do you like banana split cake? I've never had one. Uh, Dixie, should I make it? We had a banana cream. We had a banana cake. Mallory Williams, probably the most elegant cake that we ever produced here. It was outstanding. Yeah, dress and yeah, that's right. Put your bikini on and get in there Friday night. We do that every Friday night from 9 p.m. Pacific. Daylight savings time until usually midnight or one o'clock, and I and I try to put a panel on. Now I think I'm going to start putting a panel on. So it's kind of fun when the baking's done, and you know I like to drink a little bit. So there's our four beautiful sauces. These will actually, as a cool, it'll pull that seal down. Yeah, the batter is a ginger. I don't know. I always felt, I always felt like a more of a, a Marianne. I'm going to go stick these outside in the shine shack. I'll be right back. I got two more to run out. Oh yeah, we don't. It's too dry for a lot of mosquitoes here. It's too. The climate's too dry. We do have a few flies, but not too many.
Let me uh, let me go grab a chair. I'll be right there. Thanks, Jen, for picking up the onions. <laughs> Missy Jen always helpful. Uh, yeah, turn the jars upside down. Yeah, what I'll also do is I'll keep an eye out for tomatoes that are on sale at like garden stands and stuff like that, and I'll supplement if I need to. Because it looks like it's going to be a kind of a light year. And I'll be doing another batch in two weeks. I won't be doing it on video. But I'll be doing this uh, two more times through the, uh, through the balance of the uh, summer. But I wanted everybody to see how it's done. So... What else? Well, I make pies and cakes every year. I'm going to make, um, look in my mind what I was going to make. Uh, this January, I'll be making, we have what's called a Seville orange tree. And the Seville oranges are the sour oranges. If you're going to make orange marmalade, you really need Seville oranges, the English style marmalade. So we put in a, years ago, we put in a Seville orange tree. So I will be making orange marmalade uh, over the uh, early winter here, midwinter, we'll be doing that. Uh, we harvest our own lemons. I like to make lemon cakes and lemon pies, lemon meringue pies from our own. Uh, fruits we do we harvest the juice oranges we have a juicer for fresh squeezed orange juice we have a lot of oranges that we eat out of hand Washington navels Trevitas yeah marmalade yeah English style the real the real thing you don't use sweet oranges to make that you have to use a Seville orange hey Joe how are you nice to see you. Just finished uh, making up some sauce. So maybe we'll have a little surprise for you next time we see you. So, which hopefully won't be too long. So, how are you today? I'm going to get to freshen up my soda here and have a seat. Uh. Okay, Harvey, take care. Get something to eat. Thanks for coming by. Harvey's one of my uh, one of my friends from the audio community, vintage audio, two radios, all that. We'll be back in the. Uh, I'll be back in the shop in the fall. Getting back to the restoration of uh, more audio equipment. We're we're just starting to get underway with the Magnavox console. All right. And that's got a lot of work that needs to be done. It's still on. I'm gonna get. This. All right. <sighs> You guys, you guys are like Rosie. You should have had, uh, you should have had sense enough to have spaghetti tonight. Yeah, I know. There's our first gallon of what will be four gallons this season. Yeah, met Joey D. What a sweetheart he is. So I don't feel like I'm at a detention camp looking up at the uh, interrogation, you know, 
where were you on the evening of March 15th? Could you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, the cupcake, forget about it. <laughs> Remember, you got to keep your blood pressure. <laughs> you got to keep your blood pressure low. Huh? <laughs> you don't want to you fuck with the wrong person when you screw with cupcake coins. <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I agree. Go over and tell MX that today. You'll you'll find that's funny as hell. Oh, man, did Kelly ever get unbanned? Did she ever show up again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <shit. laughs> oh. <laughs> That's cool. Dixie said she loves English pea salad. <laughs> well, cupcake. As long as um, you know Jessica's back and she's she's behaving herself with a uh, fresh attitude and everything. Yeah, that's the way it should be, Cupcake. I mean, I can't even go over there. You know, when Ski Wee has a wrench, the first thing he does is just boot me out. Okay. Well, Joe, I'm going to make sure you get some of this, uh, some of this wonderful sauce here. Yeah, Cupcake puts on. The only thing I wish Cupcake's videos were a little longer. Wish Cupcake's vids were longer. She's always got some good selection of eats and stuff that she, uh, she puts up. <laughs> I'll make longer videos when I figure out how to edit. There's a uh, simple in-phone editor. It's called uh, <clears throat> Power Director CyberLink. It's free if you allow them to just put their little watermark in the lower right-hand corner, and I use it for virtually. I paid for the premium and I use it for virtually all of the uh, videos, the cemetery video, the cinematic videos. I do that all on the uh, cell phone. Yeah, Cupcake knows good food. She does know good food. Yeah, uh, Thelma, we're going to start the dollar uh, store reviews. are going to begin again in September. Here's the reason why I don't continuously do the Dollar Tree reviews. Our Dollar Tree tends to get stuffed up with a lot of the same products constantly. I so I noticed that if you wait, if you wait three to six months, then they have a whole new cycle of new products to bring in, and that way we can keep the flow going for nine months. We can keep going with them because I've eaten I've eaten some good stuff, and I've eaten some horrendous shit from. <laughs> I've eaten some really, really, really bad stuff. Uh, Deb, if you want a link, let me know if anybody wants a link. I'll set the speakers up and um, you know, and link up anybody who wants to uh, come on the chat. <clears throat> I got no place I got to be this afternoon. I'm going to okay your bitch. Check out the most recent trip uh, east water to Virginia City. Most everything is now up. I've got one more to Reno and Virginia City, and then just go down to the main channel page. Look at some of the playlists: vintage audio, uh, trips, uh, boondocking adventures, uh, travel adventures. <clears throat> yeah, basic. Well, I 
we go a little more Thelma Lou. We go into the deep end of the pool with meats and all kinds of Dollar Tree meats. I <laughs> know cupcake. We we need to do that. You know, we need to buy stuff from the Dollar Tree. We need to eat all of those products, the meats, the remember that Swiss slice? It wasn't even cheese, it was like plastic. Well, I don't know what the hell it was. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably be live another hour till about, uh, I'll probably be live till 3 o'clock my time, which is 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time on the uh, East Coast. I always try to educate these people to say it's 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. No, it's not. It's 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Yeah, Anna likes the traveling. I think Anna likes the cinematic uh, videos, too. Make sure to check out that graveyard one, Anna. Uh, Thelma Lou says, and most stuff in our stores aren't even a dollar. Most two or three. Everything in the store is a buck. Everything in the store is a buck. And I still see people going up to the counter. How much is this? How much is this? How much does this cost? It's a dollar. How much is this? It's a dollar. How much is this? It's a fucking dollar. You know? Shit. And it says, I don't have a dollar store near me. Anna, your life is just deprived, honey. Okay, you two, uh, take care, Eastwater. Thanks for being along. Yeah, you'll really like it, Anna. Anna likes cinematic type of videos. You know, when I take my clothes off, I get 600 to 1,000 views. But if I do a cinematic video, <laughs> I get oh, lucky if I get 100. Uh, let's see. Marmaduke comic was launched in 1954. Wow, it's that, uh, that long. Yeah, Thelma Lou, when you stop in the States, you have a lot of, yeah. It's good. I don't know how people, I don't know why Kennedy is so expensive. I don't know why. Oh, Cupcake said she erased her comment. That's funny. Yeah, something older than me. I ain't no spring chicken, Thelma Lou. I'm not saying I'm looking at brochures for assisted living communities because I don't think they can handle, right? <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Thelma. Uh, hey, Jessica, Jennifer, how you doing, sweetie? She says, I have a real-life Marmaduke. I call her Mamaduke, though. That's funny. Nice to see you, Jessica. I hope your Sunday is going well. One of the fun commentators on Doit. Uh, Yeah, thank you, Anna. It's really my passion in life to see how far you can, how far you can do, how far you can push using a cell phone, just a cell phone for videography instead of hauling around two thousand dollars worth of camera gear and stuff. Wow, Tara, that really, jeez. Tara says, I had a co-worker that would buy new socks and wear them for 30 days and then return them over and over and over. Wow. Thank you, Jessica. Can you believe that? Wear for 30 days and then return socks? Yeah, that's it, Harvey. That was uh, manic. What was that? Manic... Uh, Manic cigars. That chick was too hot for uh, too hot for television. Let's see. Thelma Lou says, "Do you think the bottom of YouTube is quieter now, or do you think it's just because it's summer and people are busier now?" Uh, you know, I've been around. Uh, I've been on YouTube since early, since January of 2013, and when I joined the when I went into the RV community and it became the official blending of these. RV and trans community, and then it, then you know, we merged with 
this year we merged with the troll community. <laughs> Like the, like the professional troll community on, on YouTube. And it's really a remarkably wonderful blend. But it's like Andy said, every summer things heat up. Last summer wasn't real hot. 2015 was off the hook. 2016 was pretty bad. 2017 was a little bit of a breather, but 2018 was off the hook again. Because people people split into factions on uh, on Boyd. Well, now he wants eighteen thousand for implants. What Elvis? Yeah, Anna, we we merged with the professional troll community. <laughs> Jack Sparrow, e, e Bagger Scum, Tony Mullins, all these. <laughs> yeah, Clone Wars 2017. Anna's been around for, Anna's been around. She's seen all this stuff. Cupcake Zinger's been around. I know Jessica's been around. I know Deb's been around. Deb's, I've been hanging with Deb since 2015. So Deb used to uh, run my chats when I was away. Yeah, I like the trolls. If you don't like the trolls, oh, wow, Deb. 18000 for implants. My dentist, first thing he saw, that rotten tooth, and I had two bad ones. He said, i got to pull the tooth. I said, I'm not losing the tooth. We're going to save the tooth. He said, well, go to the endontist, the root canal doctor. And I said, is this tooth savable? He's like, <clears throat> a close call. Flip a coin, you'll have to have some really heroic dentistry to save that tooth. So I paid for heroic dentistry. Oh, thank you, Lori. Uh, also, check out the Ghosts of Virginia City. You may enjoy that too. Oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. Candace, how are you, sweetheart? There's my uh, there's my future girlfriend if things ever hit the skids uh, with Kip. <laughs> I know Thelma. I'm not paying for fifty thousand for teeth. I'd rather go in the fucking shop and make my own. <laughs> uh, I don't think I saw that movie behind the candelabra. Hey Jeremy, how are you, sweetheart? There's my Candice. That's my future sweetheart. Yeah, you got to teach me a lot of shit, Lori. You got to teach me uh, coloring. Yeah, how to chroma key. You'd have a blast. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm all good. Good. Okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, keep her safe so I can flirt with Candice <laughs> with that. Without risking, without risking bodily injury or worse, <laughs> uh, Candace is awesome. She's a real Texan now. Oh, I did comment on that Facebook posting. That was really cute. Hey, the sauce is uh, the sauce has really turned out good. Got them right here. They're just uh, upside down curing a little bit. They turned out turned out real good. We did a gallon today, so I'll be doing this uh, three more times. I'll probably be supplementing with some purchased tomatoes. Yeah, Anna says Zach Bagans has filmed at least half a dozen shows in Virginia City. I'll tell you, Annie, Anna, it's kind of a freaky place, Virginia City, for sure. You can feel the ghosts everywhere. Uh, it's nice to see uh, Tara Boo and Dixie. Always honored when Dixie stops by. <laughs> Dixie's funny. She's I like Dixie. She tells it like it is. She's like uh, I saw her on Dave's side. I don't know who's chatting. She was like Rosie and that Berg Scott. He's always got to have that fucking bird. <laughs> it's, 
and somebody else made the comment, well, that's that's Rosie. You're being Rosie. <laughs> oh, Anna, it's a wonderful place to go. And, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. I just came back a month ago from ghost hunting. I found more than I would have liked. Lori Green, were you, where were you ghost hunting? The Dollar Tree. <laughs> That's where I usually see people that are half dead. <laughs> uh, shit. Yeah, where did you where did you go? Okay, I'll check it out, Harvey. I will check it out. Yeah, Candace, how's your mom doing? Yeah, I'm Switzerland. It's kind of funny though. I love I love some of the comments. Like, uh, you know, there's not a mean bone in Ty and Dixie's uh, being, so she's always very diplomatic when <laughs> put stuff out there. Oh, that's cool. I mean, a man. Okay, I thought you. Dixie's my daughter and Ty from Roll Tide. Oh, there we go. So you're, um, yeah, Alabama, the Crimson Tide. All right, awesome. Damn, good. Lori, why don't you post the link for your coloring channel for it's Color My World? Why don't you put the link there so that people can check it out? <clears throat> yeah, uh, Bear Bryant. That's it, Bear Bryant, man. I always love the tie. Damn. How could a, a football team be so great for so long? <clears throat> because they recruit well. Never do a Ouija board. Never do that stuff. Why would you ever take a chance? I mean, we, they used to sell the Ouija board game, and it was like, whoa. Might explain a lot of society's ills today, <laughs> thanks to Parker Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Parker Brothers, for uh, <laughs> inviting all the spirits and goons from the other world in. Shit. Yeah, trolls and Burt Bacharach. What the world? Needs now is love, sweet love. Not just for one, but for everyone. That should be the Boyk theme song, huh? What the Boyk needs now. <laughs> you guys are lucky. You get to watch Boyk from a safe distance. Oh, there we go. There's uh, there's Lori's uh, channel there. There we go. Got it. Think of Lori all creeping around, huh? That's cool, Lori. I look forward to checking that out. That's awesome. We're going to go to a jail, dude. It's too freaked out. Hi, Drew. How are you? <clears throat> We're talking about ghosts, goons, and dollar trees. <laughs> What's the difference? Right. Uh, uh. Hey, Jack Sparrow. How are you doing, Jack? You too. I hope you're having a good one in uh, Vermont. We just finished uh, just finished making up some uh, sauce from our uh, tomatoes here. Hope your Sunday is going good. Lisa's doing good. Glad to see you.
Yeah, I'd like to do a ghost tour. That'd be pretty good, but I'm I'm afraid of ghosts and shit, so. Yeah, it turned out pretty good, Jack. We're going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do another uh, live stream on it, but we'll end up doing that. Uh, just put up a gallon today. Next time, I'll probably put up three gallons of supplement with some purchased uh, purchased tomatoes, so it'll be a good uh We'll get our four gallons. It'll carry us through the uh, the whole year. Uh, Dixie says, I worked in a haunted nursing home. It was a trip. I saw some new workers run out and never come back. Yeah. Yeah, I do pizza. I'll do pizza with it, Lori. I'll do that uh, live sometime. Absolutely. That's a really good idea. I've made pizza before. Don't hate me. It was called the Berg's Pizza. You can see it on the channel. Making the Berg's Pizza. <laughs> I just lost 10 people on the subscription. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did a lasagna cupcake. Did you see the... Uh, did you know, did you see I did the lasagna for before the uh, fishing trip? I did a uh, made lasagna and uh, Italian bread. Did a uh, four or five hour hangout on that, so. No, I never had a cauliflower crust. Yeah, Jeremy said, or a nice spaghetti, that's exactly it, yeah. Yeah, go check it out, Cup, uh, Cupcake. The uh, lasagna just, it turned out great. Yeah, Jack, I think uh, you'd enjoy it. You know, Janet does a lot of cooking, and she was very impressed with it. She, uh, she, you know, usually she's not one to compliment a lot. Molly, Dolly, hi, sweetie, how are you? Uh, the beautiful Molly Dolly, the pride of Chicago. Yeah, Molly, uh, uh, Marshall was in earlier complaining about the heat and humidity and uh, the heat and humidity there. Yeah, talking about meatballs reminds me of Godfather movie. Yeah. Yeah, Casper's the only real ghost. Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not much on the ghost and stuff, but I would love to... I'd love to be with Lori on one of those ghost hunting things. I think that that would be pretty cool. And I think this October I'll do a cemetery tour, a nighttime cemetery tour. <laughs> Allie. <laughs> I thought Ellie would stop by, but she's probably deep in doing her own canning. She's probably doing that. Yeah, Lori said we have a tour in Vegas. Hey, Lori, did you go to Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum yet? Did you check that out? Yeah, I got you, Molly. Oh, God. He was given a generator, but didn't like it. Good Lord. Yeah, I'm kind of mixed feelings about that, Lori. I'm not sure I want to pay the gate price on that. I'm hoping maybe in the fall they'll have a two-for deal or a, a afternoon ticket or something. I don't want to pay 40 bucks or something, whatever the hell it is to go in. I don't know what the admission fee is. So I'm, I'm hoping it'll become a coupon thing. There we go. Joe said my mother made him the size of baseballs. That's cool. Yeah, we finally met Joe D in person. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, not cool. I mean, uh, yeah, Joe. I think uh, I think we're going to invite you up to the rancho, spend a Sunday here. And uh, I'm going to make you nice spaghetti and meatballs. How about that? How would that be? Yeah, if I was given a free generator or something, you're damn right. I'd be like, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. There's Missy Jen. Are you going to hit me, Jen? Huh? Uh, there 
Where's Missy? I got Jack Sparrow, Molly Dolly, Joe's in here. Joey the great Anna Alexis. You have to generate a works. What's the problem exactly? Molly send me beautiful flowers back. Yeah, yeah who doesn't, Jack? I mean, find me a person that doesn't like spaghetti and meatballs and that exists. You know, be like, really? Where did you disconnect? Hi, Jack. Jack would be like, where did you disconnect in life? <laughs> I knew anybody didn't like spaghetti. Hey, Harvey, oh. I'm still here. I did not leave yet. I'm yeah. for the cab to come. Yeah. Every, uh, every day, Missy Jen wakes up and says, Is this the day? Is this the straw that broke the camel's back today? That's right. Yesterday was the muddy mess, but Jen, I cleaned up the kitchen pretty good today. Just a little sauce on the walls and other shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we're going to invite Joey up to, we're going to invite him up yeah. for our Sunday dinner, Jen. And actually, he's going to come up in the afternoon, early afternoon, and spend uh, spend the afternoon yeah, with us. Yeah, we will really love to have you here, Joe. Yep. And you can decide if you want to be on the, if you want to make your video debut on Boy. Because everybody's like, ah. Why didn't you stick to Cameron Joe's face like you do everybody? <laughs> we will respect your privacy. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, yeah. We Here's will Jeremy. respect your privacy. No worries, mate. We will respect wow. your privacy. Wow. Dixie says we have a place out in the country with spook lights coming every night. Nobody would go with me to check them out. I went by myself, and it was a great experience. So, Dixie, uh, am, am I correct that you live in Alabama? I don't come with you. Yeah, I like spooky places. Not me. I just want to know if Dixie lives in Alabama because that's that's a place that lend a lot of places in the South lend themselves because of the climate, the Spanish moss, the the swamps. Uh, yeah, you're on the fence. That's fine, Joe. I'm not going to put anybody on camera. That's um, you know. So yeah, Alabama. That's really cool. One of my one of the states I really want to look around is Alabama. Take a camera and set up a video camera and see if you can catch some orbs, light orbs. Sometimes, Joe, it's cooler in life when we when we keep you as a hidden ace in the hole. That's right. <laughs> we set you up with a troll account. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> oh, you're in the very, very oh, north of okay. North of Alabama. I'm a wimp too, Molly Dolly. When it comes to spook stuff, I've caught spirits on video and on pictures in houses I, that I've lived in. I do videos in the kitchen. People be like, Rosie, there's orbs on that. I took a video. picture of Mandy once in a house in Missouri, and there was a total figure right in front of Mandy. Jack, I think a lot of these corporate, uh, corporate. I mean, Harvey, I think a lot of these corporate types run Vegas now. Okay, take care, Jack. Right, Thanks for bye, stopping Jack. by. Nice to see you. Nice to have seen you. Enjoy yeah. your, uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Yeah, Molly, I don't watch too many horror. I don't, you know, I'll, I'll watch clever horror movies, but I don't want to watch slasher movies, Saw, and I get nothing out of them. You know, Hellraiser with Pinhead and all, all that stuff. Horror and real ghosts and all spirit world is two different worlds. You got to keep that separate. Yeah, I mean, uh, Harvey, 20 years ago when I went to Vegas, it, the, the human touch was still there, right? There weren't all machines. You had to have a player card and blah, blah, blah. Or you had to earn so many points to get a buffet. You could you could shoot craps for a half hour or so, you know, an hour, and you could ask the box guy, hey, you think I can get a buffet? And, the, you know, the pit boss just writes out a ticket, and there you go. Go get a buffet. And he didn't have all this point bullshit. And, uh, you know, resort fees and all this crap now. So they gutted a lot of that out. 
Yeah, that's why the exorcist kind of killed me on that. that based on true Catholic Church exorcism in Mount Rainier, Maryland. I mean, like, really? Well, some of those movies are a little bit over over. Yeah, they're dramatized. Dramatized. Molly says it'll be my first Halloween this year in the U.S. That'll be cool, Molly. I put the ghost app on my phone, so <laughs> I took watched, it off within an hour. It went crazy. in Africa. Jesus, that. Dixie, that's funny as hell. Driving out <laughs> demons out of people. I watched that. <laughs> if I went crazy with <laughs> the ghost app. Yeah, I don't you know. Wow, man. I don't know. To me, a real horror movie is like Deliverance or something like that. It could happen in real life. When you're canoeing down and, uh, you know, some people just start taking you out, shooting you with arrows. I mean, that to me is a real horror story. That's a real horror story. Missy Jones, like every day with Rosie's, like a horror story. <laughs> <laughs> what's the next what's the next mess pig pen's going to get into uh, yeah Deliverance that was yeah it's a messed up movie you know Deliverance yeah yeah Molly that's funny Molly's like I struggled watching Casper the Friendly Ghost yeah that's funny Yeah, I think that uh, horror movies that are based in actual reality, especially ones with religious uh, religious uh, foundations to them, are, uh, it can be a lot more horrific than somebody running around with a chainsaw. And yeah, Deliverance was, uh, yeah, I think so, Anna. Uh, Dixie says my first house was haunted and sold it within a year after the remodel. And a new buyer is the man because I didn't tell him it was haunted. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Now you know damn. Yeah, you sure got some pretty lips. Now you know damn well, Jen, Louisiana's got a lot of haunted shit down there. <laughs> you know damn well, Louisiana's haunted. Yeah, that's right, Joe. They call it poetic license. Wow. Civil War left a lot of civil war left a lot of pissed off behind horror stories in Louisiana. Civil War left all across. Oh, can you imagine guys you go to you go to you go into 1860, 1861, and you're the richest state per capita in the United States, and when the Civil War's over, you're the poorest. Four years you go from number one to, to Apollo number two. <laughs> yeah, Brad You don't think that that left an indelible mark on Jack? Jack was so pissed off when he was like, giving us the, the oh, tour. Oh, yeah, the guy that gave us the tour. He was place. grinding his teeth as he was talking. <laughs> he was, I was like, this should have been my plantation. Yeah, terror is like some hangouts are on it, you think? Instead of me giving a tour to y'all, this should have been one. Yeah, this should have been our family's plantation. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah. Let's check, make sure he's got no weapons on him, no pencils, no firearms, no knives. <laughs> no, no shit, Anna. There have been really some, there have been some real horrifying hangouts on, oh. on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Anna's, Anna's always, she's always in the back. She's always there. Anna's always in the, uh, as a reserve front row seat for the horrors. Of, uh, the horrors. I hear Domino barking. Yeah. I guess they're back. I heard the big truck. They had neighbors, they company. Oh, okay. The parents were there. Basically. Okay. Yeah, Molly Dolly. Hey, Actually, Sue. Yeah, Sue. We just put up our first. Uh, we just put up our first gallon of what's going to be uh, five, four or five gallons of sauce for the season. So I'm very happy about that. Very happy about that. You must declare if someone died, if the house is up for sale. Yeah. 
Yeah, like the neighbor, when they moved in here, the real estate agent, the week or so before I bought it, the real estate agent is like, I got to tell you, the next door neighbor was, uh, they took uh, they took uh, zip ties and they t tied his hands behind his back and they blew his head off. <clears throat> like, what do you think about that? I said, look, the whole prop, the whole property is horrifying. <laughs> what's, what's one more thing on that? You know, bring it on, right? <laughs> uh, shit. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm gonna make the marmalade. Yeah, I've had a, I Molly. I had somebody uh, have a heart attack live on one of my hangouts, and I didn't even know it. Nice to see you, Sue. No, I'm gonna. I can't wait to go to Nashville, though. I've been all over Kentucky, but I haven't been over, uh, I haven't been down Tennessee. I definitely want to go to Nashville. Uh, I got family in Pigeon Forge, uh, Tennessee. And a lot of family. I think Anna and I may be related. <laughs> have a lot of family out of Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, Harlan County, Kentucky. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and Emmitsburg, Maryland. Emmitsburg, Maryland, up near Gettysburg. Yeah, must be near. Hey, Linda, how are you? When did you? When you did the shimmy shack? That's it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, or any death in the house. We could be, you know, Anna. Asheville wasn't that big a place. Yeah, my gra my grandmother, Mary Robinson. She was an orphan. I think we were the only, uh, I think it was the only white family named Robinson, except for Brooks Robinson. Basically. I'm always some asshole doing 50 down at 25 of street. Yeah, I'm not sure about a haunted place, you know. Hey, Mallory, how you doing, sweetie? Nice to see you. The great Mallory Williams stopping by on a 15-minute break. I hope your Sunday's going well, Mallory. Mallory's making big bank these days. I think uh, probably before 2020, she'll be running. Uh, she'll be running running Bloomingdale's. Yeah, Mary Robinson, yeah. Two sisters, Lucille and Mary. And they were both orphaned. And my grandmother was raised and she enrolled in the Palmer School of Shorthand. And <laughs> she became a secretary and uh eventually made her way up to Baltimore and her sister Lucille married married the guy that started High Leader racetrack and made a fortune in that uh, multi-millionaire. Wow, Sue says we just sold a family home and we're lucky we didn't have to answer the question about any guests in the family. Yeah, Mallory Williams hail to the Queen. The doyen, the diva of good taste and all things fashionable. Oh, wow. Hannah, you're kidding. It says, Rosie, I married into a Mary Robinson family. <laughs> I do not lie. <laughs> well, Anna, that means if we meet, we probably can't have safely have sexual relations. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am, uh, Glock 21. I just don't want to disclose when that's going to be, the videos and all that. Yeah, I cleaned up my dirt from yesterday, uh, Sue. Oh, don't trigger Jen again. Yeah, I don't want to disclose. I don't want to. We used to do a live event distilling, but now times being what they are, I'm sure if we were to do that live, there would be cops descending all over the rancho and stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it's perfectly legal to have a still. It's perfectly legal to have a mash, but it's not legal. If they catch in the act of distilling, then, you know, you got a problem. So it's a once a year, twice a year thing. So we will be doing something. Absolutely. At an undisclosed time. Man, Sue. Uh, yeah, Jen was pretty hot yesterday. When you ever, whenever you see Jen coming out with a stick, then you know you're going to have a problem. Okay, yeah, Mary and Lucille Robinson out of Asheville, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, I, my only memories of my grandmother was laying on the couch with Lawrence Welk on TV, smashed out of her mind. She was, she, she died at 68 of alcoholism or something. Yeah, Missy Jen's awesome. I let her, let her fight my battle. She gave, you, she gave you one of those. How long have you flown the drone? We got the drone last year and it sat here for six months. And I finally had the courage to, well, I, I gave it to Missy Jen and I said, guess what? You're experienced with uh, drone piloting. You're going to fly. <laughs> and she flew it and then I took over. And uh, yeah, humming of vine, but that's pretty cool, Dixie. Uh, but what do you think about the Lady Banks roses there? Thanks, Timothy. So we've, I started flying the drone really when we got down to, I would say April, I began uh, first flights over the burn area. And then, uh, then I've been flying it basically everywhere since I've been getting better and better, I think. But you know, you always think to yourself, man, there goes $2,000 up in the air. <laughs> All I see is, Twenty hundred dollar bills floating around the sky. Shit, you guys know how cheap I am. I mean, if we ever lost that drone, I would really, I'd really, you know, I'd really cut loose a load in my pants. <laughs> uh, hey, Rosie's left testicle. Welcome aboard. Long time no see. Uh, thank you, Eastwater. I really appreciate it. I put a lot into the cinematic uh, videos. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of times on Void, if it's not controversial, then very few people will, not very few, but not as many people will watch it. Jen, am I in your way? I'm just going to go no, another 15 minutes and then I'm done. I just need to take this out to okay. get it to room temperature. I don't want to be in your way. In your way. Yeah, you know it's a good hangout when my left testicle shows up. Uh, subject I'm in more is quantum physics. <laughs> I communicate with a professor oh, yeah, called Dr. Ronald. He lectured at the University of Connecticut. We discussed theories on time travel. That's cool. Yeah, my left left testicle showed up. So that's cool, Harvey. I did he did he have a did he talk about the multiverse? The multiverse in conjunction with time travel? Or did he have the theory of the black hole? Jumping through the wormhole black hole. Yeah, you've been off for a while. I haven't seen you in a while. I go, let's see, Molly says, I go for walks along Lake Michigan, always see a lot of drones flying around. I think the same if they drop out of the sky, what a waste of money. Well, the new drones, and we have the latest and greatest uh, drone, and we have more confidence as time goes on. I use Jim Beam's devil cut. I don't have any rivalries. That's, that's good. I like Jim Beam. Work, work, work. You're working hard, huh? That's not a bad thing on Boyd. It's almost an unknown 
you know, Keeps you out of trouble. Yeah, if you want to really have a horror, you want to really make a horror movie on Voight, just go print out about 100 applications for employment and start spreading them around Voight. <laughs> then you'll see people running like they saw a fucking ghost. <laughs> <laughs> In a real horror film. Gainful employment starring. <laughs> oh, absolutely, Lori. When I was over in uh, Napa County, take care, uh, Anna. Thanks for coming in, sweetie. Lori, when I was in Napa County and I flew the drone by the uh, Culinary Institute of America, I mean, it's beautiful over in Napa Valley. And I started to bring that thing home. The damn thing tried to land on the middle of the fucking highway. The big highway that people go up and down Napa County, wine tasting. And all I could see was this drone coming down just in front of somebody's windshield. And they swerve left to avoid what they think is an alien in town or they don't know what the hell it is, right? And they plow, they get right into a head on with a truck. And we have multiple deaths on the scene because it is fucking drone. So, but I, I, you know, I clenched my a hole and redirected the flight. It was very, very scary. Yeah, you check that out in the video. I put it up. People said, "Oh bullshit, you didn't crash the drone." The I put up the video. The fucking thing was going and looping in circles. Yeah, I would be afraid, Laura. You don't think when I'm flying this thing over Reno and stuff, and I'm thinking to myself, shit, if this thing drops out of the fucking sky, I hope it lands on top of the building. But these things are so well made now. Hey, Bergs. Yeah, probably will, Bergs. As a matter of fact, nice to see you. I'm going to make another Bergs Deluxe Pizza Pie with some of that homemade. What do you want to see on it? Last time you were kind of critical of it. I thought it turned out pretty good. Thought it turned out pretty good. Yeah, Lori, don't think I don't think about that every time I put the drone up. Every damn time. Virginia City, everywhere. You look around, it's a little windy. You're like, mm, should I fly it? Well, I'm not going to be back here for a while, so I hate to lose the opportunity. Then I didn't put enough fucking, didn't charge it. So I was going to do a fly over the cemetery and have that, and then, you know, I've got about 20 feet up in the air, and the damn thing, like, battery warning, low battery warning. Like, Fuck. Yeah, that's right. That's why they pay big bucks for drone footage. So Berg says, onion, sausage, pepperoni, black olive. Wow, you really got it fully loaded. Look at Berg says, onion, sausage, pepperoni, black olive, mushroom. Missy Jack would like that. Just as long as it doesn't have peppers on it. And black olives. Yeah, I'll eat the olives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you're, you, you know exactly how I feel, Laurie, when that thing goes airborne. It's like, ah, your finger is a little sweaty on the control. Yeah, why not put a little camera on a June bug? There you go. Casey Neistat had some guy on that had a little drone. It's under the FAA uh, radar because of its small size. They put a GoPro on top of it. And they can fly that on the cities. They can do anything with that because it's, it's, it, it's too small for FAA regulation. So... Harvey said they're changing the laws here in the UK. You cannot fly higher than 400 feet. You cannot fly in a congested area. We do the same thing, Harvey. If like when I went to Reno, one of the first things is I researched the Reno, the Reno drone laws, and it said if you want to fly a, a drone in Reno, and it doesn't matter the distance before your flight, you've got to call the Reno Control Tower the air traffic control tower, they have a drone line. You give them your name, your phone number, where you're flying, where your flight path is likely going to be, and uh, you know where you're launching from and at what time. So we did that. 
called in. And that way you're kind of protected if something bad does happen. Well, you know, you're kind of protected. So we, we don't go that high. I stayed under 400 feet. And uh, Jen's like, well, that tall Eldorado, that tall Silver Legacy Tower is more than 40 stories. So I couldn't really go above that. I appreciate you checking them out, Eastwater. Thank you. Uh, particularly, the one that people are really enjoying is the drone flight that we did over the mansion from the Beverly Hillbillies, Jed Clampett's mansion from the air. I think that's getting up to 5,000 views on that. And that's a beautiful video because I go very slowly over the garden. You see the cement pond, and it's the most expensive property in America now so check that out that's one of the drone flights too so we're always very careful where we fly uh thank you dixie i appreciate it. a lot of people enjoyed that um it's starting to get a lot of play time on uh, youtube now that so yep yeah, here's a story of a man named jay a hell of a beautiful mansion and the grounds you talk about meticulously kept okay take care Deb. i'm going to go about five more minutes and then i'm going to shut down been on for about uh, four hours been a really good hangout accomplished the objective of making some sauce and also made some new friends which is even better on uh, youtube I'm thinking of Domino's Pizza for two dollars more. You get the extravaganza. That's not bad. But there's no way to honor that here in in California. It got stuff geared, so you have to go there and pick it up now at Domino's. Yeah, check it out. I got I got tons and tons of travel videos and, and stuff. I mean, unfortunately, the main channel went down, which had travels like crazy. But it is what it is, and I'm not a I'm not a crybaby about it. You move on in life. Uh, okay, take care, Harvey. Yeah, the dinner table was a billiard table. That's exactly right, Tara. So that 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 flight turned out really good. So. But I want to thank uh, um, Dixie. It was really a pleasure talking to you. I always assumed you were uh, female, and now that you're in, now that you're in Virginia, I mean, now that you're in Alabama, you know what? My admiration level for you just went <laughs> way, way up. I fucking love Alabama. I'm not gonna lie. Um, well, they have delivery in Santa Rosa, but they're not gonna. You know, they're not going to honor that kind of deal. They're not going to honor that kind of deal here. All right, Molly Dolly, thank you, sweetheart. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Geez, sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm just closing down. We just put up a gallon of uh, sauce from our tomatoes go we're gonna put up uh, four more gallons this year so nice to see you and I uh, hope you and Beck are well are you gonna be firing up a hangout or anything Yeah, good to see you, uh, my left testicle. It has been a while, but at least you're working. Work is something that's virtually unknown here on the void, so that's a nice thing. <laughs> you know, be proud. <laughs> Hold up a paycheck sometimes and say, this is, you're not going to believe what this is, right? Like I said, if you want to scare the shit out of a lot of people down here, start, uh, start handing out applications for employment. Okay, Joey. We'll be in touch with you, okay? Love to have you come up to the rancho. <clears throat> yeah.
Yeah, thank you, Eastwater, for coming and coming in. Thelma Lou, always a pleasure to see you. Well, that's a long question. Best thing to do, Eastwater, is just uh, go, just put it in YouTube search how to do a hangout and it'll run it all through. Okay, Ty, you got it. Oh, I I know uh I know Alabama's got a lot to offer. There's a lot of brains in Alabama from the uh, space program and all kinds of stuff. I've got Matronista. She's she lives in Alabama too. So I'm a, I'm a southerner at heart for sure. PC. Okay, I'll check it out, Timothy. Okay, eating some amazing food. Uh, Dave, I'm just shutting down now. So if you want to, if you want to fire up a hangout or something, people always like to see your. Well, they like to see if you're going to go. I'm going to be honest with you, Dave. I'm going to look you straight up, straight in the eye here. They want to see if you're going to go into a fucking sugar cone. Okay, <laughs> or, or if you're going to choke on the steak. <laughs> just kidding just kidding so maybe you'll fire up a hangout so um i'm gonna get going everybody thanks so much for uh watching and uh have a wonderful rest of your day Woo! and dave enjoy chicago thanks everybody